Here we go, under starter's orders. It's an exciting time. Make sure to get over that line first. We don't want anybody to fall. We don't want anybody to have a sort of a, a false start. And of course, um, it's, it's chip timing. So, yes, you know, yes, this, this yes. is really all about yes. a show. Yeah. Once you cross that red line, you've gone underneath it. Your yes. number has the chip in it. And that's why it's, it's, it's so important that people who are not of the standard of And they're off. Beautiful, beautiful. The 39th running of the SSE Ertricity Dublin Marathon. And welcome to everybody yes. who's listening in to us, Ian. Me and you are going to have a good oh, day yeah. here. We've Beautiful got the sites. best seats. It's a gorgeous site. 20,000 runners, uh, all, all with their own different motivations, their own different ambitions, their own different goals, but all, all with the same purpose is to get through this course, enjoy it, and a sense of satisfaction, which comes with a marathon, in my experience, is second to none. It's, it's the ultimate distance, the ultimate test of endurance, 26.2 miles, 42 kilometers, which, depending which how you measure it these days. I think it's 185,000 feet, but the classic distance. And don't forget, this goes back to 490 BC, when the famous Athenian victory over the Persians in the town of Marathon, and it's, they sent a messenger back to Athens to, to celebrate the victory. That's about 26 odd miles. So it's such a historical distance. It was revived for the 1896 Olympics in Athens, and since then has become the global, sort of the global measure of, of, of human endeavour, endurance, participation, all those words. And I think it's an incredible phenomenon that Dublin has grown into one of the, um, one of Europe's biggest marathons, yeah. definitely one of Europe's best, friendliest marathon as it's known as. And um, we'll see the support on the course now over the next three or four hours, it's going to be fantastic. But as most importantly as well, there's two different, there's two different levels here. There's the people who want to finish, yeah. but there's a race up front. And to win the Dublin Marathon is a huge honour. We haven't had an Irish winner since Sean Hare back in 2013. And dare I say, there was, there was a bit of an issue that there because there were no international runners. They but you know what, I mean? that was a great oh, yes. race. Yes, of course. All I was out on the bike, I was at about six different points, just waiting for the main guys to go through, the main women. That has to rate as my favorite Dublin yes, marathon. Yes, I yeah. loved it. It was. I think, but look, as, as we say, here's who's, who's setting the pace early on, but Mick Lossy now. Holy I'm not moly. sure I'm not sure what he's thinking, if he's going to try and get away and do a do a sort of a gun-to-tape victory, which uh, I don't, I don't think we've, ever, we've ever seen that in Dublin for a while, but he's um, he's certainly going for it from the moment, from the start. Wearing the sunglasses as well, which is... Uh, I am really uh, surprised. He, uh, actually, he has a little issue with his eyes. He has to wear the sunglasses. It's the light that gets yes. at him. So you'll often be indoors with um, Mick, and he'll have the glasses on. So okay. that's not surprising. What it is surprising is he's heading out yes. here. Now, there's something I thought about, Ian. I'm not sure if you're an expert on this, but I wonder if the Kenyans and the Ethiopians like our brisk yep. morning. No, I'd say and they... they, they but they. that said, I don't see a lot of long sleeves or gloves. It says she, and there's that lad in the red. I'll catch his name in a minute. Um, with long sleeves and gloves on him. Yes. Um, but, but in general, they seem to be okay no, there. Be, oh, yeah, I've spent some time training. I've spent some time training in Kenya. Believe me, the mornings are cold. Like it's not, okay. it wouldn't be, wouldn't be yeah, balmy yeah. every time of the year. But look, I think Mick's just getting out into, into position, like staying nice and relaxed. Freddie Sithook sitting in there beside yeah, him. Freddie, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Freddie's in great shape from what I heard. So interesting, I mean, isn't it? I think he only ran a 2:22 miles in the Longford in, in August. So um, it's going to be a while. It's going to be. I don't think he's in shape. But they, let's not forget that Mick and Freddie are. Um, Clubmates. Clubmates, yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mick seems to be wearing some sort of commercial uh, vest today. I'm not quite sure what that is, but that's, that's allowed, of course. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have I'm to just, wear And we'll get back to this. I want to go back to the elite men's race, but I want to say a particular mention as we see our athletes coming across. Yeah, the last of the athletes coming across the start line of the first wave. Don't forget, we have another three waves to come. Um, I noticed an awful lot of club vests, which I love. And Dunboyne AC are here in force. I only read this yesterday. Sean Cox, that poor man that was attacked mm. in Liverpool, and yes. um, he's a member of Dunboyne AC, and I wasn't aware I of didn't that. Know that no. Nor did I until yeah. I just happened to spot it on Facebook. And Dunboyne have about 50 members here racing today. They're racing in aid of a fund for Sean's rehabilitation. Wow. So I wish all of yes, those athletes yeah, particularly yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, and you yeah. can spot their vest because it's a white vest with blue, and the Dunboyne is white across um, the chest. And yesterday in the Leinster Novice Championships, their novice men, 
finished with the same points as Crusaders, 61 points, but they lost on, on uh, countback. But they got second team, so great to have them out there doing the novices and then here today. And we have a breakaway. <laughs> really well, surprised look, at I mean, that. We're not even at the mile I one. And I, and I haven't seen, I haven't seen. Maybe, look, maybe this is as tactic just to run at his own pace and see, see draw it out because the Kenyans can be sometimes very coy and they just sit back and like yeah. I did look I mean there's two ways of approaching the, these kind of races you want to go for the time or you go for the win and the Kenyans I don't think it's any secret they come to Dublin looking for the win okay there's 12,000 euros for the for the top top men and top woman finisher that's a lot of money in Kenya only because you know the land is obviously cheaper you could buy a small it's a lot farm. of money in Dublin <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say no to no, us um, no. but I think the point there is like the Kenyans they're not really into this for the fast time so if Mick, if Mick Fields is in shape to just go for it open a bit of a gap get away from these guys they're going to have suddenly realize they're going to have to run for this prize so yeah, you know we're only in Cuff Street here now and he's already caught up with some of the wheelchairs it'll be fantastic I mean look I mean it's very early days but uh, what, yeah, what yeah. a and by the way I think it's worth noting um, you know we know we all know who um, Nicholas's coach is, Dick Cooper, Dick. three time winner of Dublin, one of the absolute legends of the sport because he used to go out and race back when it was a proper race as well. I mean, you know, he used to knock in, you know, 213, 214 consistently, which is yeah. back then was a, was a world class time. There weren't many men back then winning 213, 214 at the, at the, at the, at the at the consistency that, that he was. So, um, getting a quick update in the wheelchairs, we're up at the three mile marker already, and there's a man up the road. Now, we'll see if we identify this person. I'm not quite sure if it's uh, Patrick Mond. I don't think it is. I suspect this might be uh, John, Boy. John Boy Smith. We'll have to yeah. try and get that together. The that. interesting thing about John Boy, also known as uh, John Charles Smith and John Boy Smith. So, for, for John Boy, he suffered a spinal cord injury in 2006, and that left him. Uh, as a paraplegic. He was six months in Mandeville Spinal wow. uh, Unit Rehabilitation, but it was there that he was introduced to wheelchair bodybuilding. Body building, yes. And he did that from 07 to 09. Then from the bodybuilding, he took up para power lifting and he broke two British records in the bench press. Yes. But after he watched the 2012 London Zero Paralympic Dwyer. Games, he decided to chase his dream of becoming a Paralympian. And he started that journey as a seated shot putter, discus, javelin, and he became the number one international wheelchair and empty sports world ranking in those events. But it was when he was competing in Berlin that he was told his main discipline, the javelin, which he was the best at, was pulled from the uh, uh, 2006 Rio Para Olympics. And it, that's what he wanted to get to. That was his aim. So while being ranked as number one in the world and undefeated throughout his, the two seasons, he decided to retire from throwing. He knew he had the upper body strength and uh, he, fa he located a coach in South of England for the wheelchair racing. Wow. That was at yeah. the Weir Archery Academy. Yeah. That's where he met Jenny Archer, and that was only in 2014. Yes. And she saw the potential of the wheelchair racing. Beautiful. No, look, that's him. It is. If you see his helmet here, Sam, uh, Can John you see that? it's definitely him. Right. And, see, got his and that's God. the guy that. Yes. Um, Patrick Monaghan was yes, reading Yeah, well, look, it's about. obviously he's obviously put his uh, put his put his put his form. So here we are entering the Phoenix Park. Which is, as I say, this is the beautiful. What a beautiful autumn day to be running in. What I consider one of the most beautiful parks in the world, Me bar too. none. It's an absolute great place for running, and I've served many a time running around that field. It's a, I suppose, a bit of a lonely place for the runners at this hour because it's still so early into the race, and you suddenly can be a little bit cut off. But here we are back at the Elite Men, and yeah. Mick Lars, he's still rolling out in front there. I mean, is he? He's probably coming up to the first mile at this stage. So we'll see as they're coming around down. They're coming down toward the, the side of the riverbanks now, um, heading to the side of Clamp Russell Street there, down by Christ Church Cathedral. Yeah, and he is absolutely motoring. He's really going for it here. He's past Christ Church. He's yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> again, I'm not quite sure. This, this has to be a, a tactic that was decided in advance. I mean, nobody decides they're going to suddenly break away in the start of marriage unless, unless, it was, unless it was sort of decided in advance. So this is a clear strategy by Mick Clossy to either get a gap on the rest of the field, which he's doing, which he's absolutely doing at this stage, and four the Kenyans into a race which they may not have been kind of bargained for at the start line which is going to be fascinating to see how that unfolds absolutely I was chatting to Mick during the week and he's saying that for the for the Dublin City Marathon this is his uh, debut attempt at Dublin City he's never actually run it before a very interesting and this might be why he's so determined a very interesting fact he has national senior awards in half marathon 10k road and track cross country and he wants to cap it off with winning National the marathon, marathon and course, that's his yeah. aim and he said he's here to race and he said i'm going to go with the pace i'm here to race 
the interesting thing about Dublin in the last couple of years, and as you said earlier, with um, Bernard Ritoch from Kenya, who is here today. Yes, defending he champion. He won it last year in 2.15.53. Yes, yeah. Now, OK, it's not as easy a course as, say, Seville, but that's where Mick did his PB this year in February. He did 2.14.52. And I remember him saying to me, he actually um, lost touch with the chasing pack, and he was annoyed with himself for doing that. We'll come back now as as we look here again. John Boy Smith at rolling John down, Boy rolling Smith. through the park on his own. I look at this is this is. I kind of thought maybe Patrick Monaghan might be to stay with him. He's at mile four already. Yeah, looked what, like he's opening a big gap. What but. Patrick did say was that the, he found the first half of the marathon the tougher one. Yes. And he he said if John Boy was going to get away from him, it would have been that. Now we're yes. able to see behind here, yes. and I don't see anybody in the background. But he is setting an absolutely ferocious there, pace. Yeah, coming, yeah, there, there was somebody just coming So it's, he's probably here. got about 30, 30 seconds, it looks like, at this stage. Like but it. look but at this. But it, it ain't over till it's over because Patrick said the second half for him is his fastest. Okay, okay. Coming across the Liffey now, yes. and we're going into the north side. Interesting. What Mick was saying to me, um, just as a comment, the only negative comment he had was, there should be a bit more on the north oh, side really? so this okay. Rohini clan okay. can get yes, out. Yes, and of yes. course, Rohini Shamrocks. But there were those iconic pictures when it used to go through Rohini, didn't it? And, and, and that's the, where Dick yeah. Cooper won oh, his yeah. marathon. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, they, they were they were glorious days. But look, I think, in fairness, I think it's I think it's a balanced enough course. But I think there's possibly, I think I think it's good to include some of the Phoenix Park. I mean, there is an argument maybe they could keep it maybe more within the confines of the city. But I think oh god, I'd be so upset if they took it out of the Phoenix Park. I, I think yeah, exactly. I think you have to bring it up to Phoenix Park in terms of you know it'd be such a beautiful place to go running. But uh, look, the, the thing about Dublin is they could run they could run ten or twelve different courses and they'd still be as uh, I think as equally spectacular but it's a, I think it's a nice balance I love the finish I love the way once you get up that's on the Klonsky Hill and it's and down, it's down over the UCD flyover and it's a beautiful run in there Northumberland Road that's probably the finish. where you're getting confused about this not being very hilly you're only <laughs> thinking of the time you finish yes, yes you know what's interesting here I've been watching Mick and he keeps looking around mm. and it has that look of lads are you gonna race me you know yes. get up here and race me and while I'll give him credit for doing that and he did say he wanted a good hard race here and he's here to race I'd prefer to see him in that packing yeah well he's they're, going, they're, they're, they're kind of regrouping as you say that uh, Susan they're kind of coming are, together now they, yeah. there's a group of at least seven or eight Kenyans there not all Kenyans I say sorry a few Ethiopians in there as well we should we shouldn't we should forget the Ethiopians I know there's one guy I was told to look out for famous Ethiopian name Bekele Asafa Bekele um, he's won again he's a 214 man I think he was I think he was third in Dublin last year he also ran Dublin in 2015 he was third this is a guy who knows Dublin and will will, will definitely have ambitions of of making it in the top three again this year and it is but his PB is um is only 21401 like it's only 50 seconds faster than um than Mick that was done in Korea in 2016 yes so I think Mick has certainly looked at this and he's examined yes who yes, is where yeah. and Mick this year ran his 214.52 he knows he's in good shape now on top of that he did win he did race in the European Championships in Berlin in August where he finished 18th and um, so he has that in his legs as well but he is up for this and in general here like if we look at Ritoch, who last year won the double marathon in 2.15.53. He also won Belfast in 2017. Yes. And this year he was third in Zurich Marathon in 2018. But his PB of 2.10 is from Frankfurt in 2011. Yes, so yes. The, a couple of the others worth mentioning here, and we're back oh, all guess, yeah, with our favourite place. Beautiful, beautiful scene there. Up the, up the That's my happy main, place main, in Phoenix, Phoenix Park. Park Road. Love yes, it, love yes, it. Yeah. But the lads behind... Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. Look, they're all back together here at the front of the men's race. Okay, I'm going um, to give... Nick Ooh, Flossy. Mick. What happened there? Someone is shooting to the front here. Can be identified this guy, number four. I think I'm seeing his number here, but I'm not, seeing, I'm not quite sure. I think they're Nate. Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's looking the water for his station. water. Sorry, yeah. no, that's, that's, okay. that's, that's perfectly so normal. That's the perfectly elite standard. athletes are allowed to pick their water up from these particular elite. They're every 5K. Oh, yes, K. yeah. So, and they'd have their names on them. Well, they'd have a name or a colour yes, or something. Now, it looks like Freddie missed his water there. But that would have been cleared. Yeah. 
that they're allowed to hand them. So I was wondering why Mick put his hand up, so that's what he was doing. I'm yes. here, where's my water? Yeah, you know? exactly. And that's why a bit of, we saw a bit of a spurt there by the Kenyan. There's a bit of panic, because, I mean, it happens before. We've seen, like, I've seen I've seen athletes fall over at the drinks table. Like, it's a huge deal, because you, and especially at the start of the race, like, people think, oh, it's very, it's important to drink at the last five, six miles. It's oh, actually no. not. This is the point. This is, this, you're this right. Is you get, get your hydration in. Because in. if you don't yeah. top it up at this stage, it's going to, it's, it's, it's too late. By too the late. rule of thumb, by the time you're thirsty, so it's totally bare. Back into the Phoenix Park, oh, and they're beautiful. passing the um, the back of the zoo. There, we're going to come down now. We're going to pass by the polo grounds, which many, many, many marathon runners yes. have done many um, yeah. training sessions on. Oh, including uh, including the great Katrina McKernan would have done all her running oh, over there over the years. There, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's so sad. When I say sad, I'm sad. It's, it's a pity that we never saw Katrina run Dublin in her prime because I mean she was. She would have no doubt she would have been right up there. Or they'd have an army man running. I think I presume he's either he's either oh doing God. that for their cause. I don't think that's fancy dress. No, I don't think that's fancy dress. I think he's obviously training for some marathon in the desert or something, but God, that's gotta hurt. In a pair of army boots, oh no. And all your gear. No, I really I, I think he's I think he's got he's, he's, in, he's in for a long day. And and really sore Achilles. Um, yes, yeah. That's going like to be her. tough, isn't Nicola? I well, think we can take it. She's from <laughs> GB. <laughs> They're already walking, a bit of a walk at the stage. I'm just going to see if that is that. That's hardly Bernard Rotich out in front, the defending champion. He looks like that kind of similar style. Let's about read his name at the stage. We'll no, see. it's the, the light on it. Yeah. Actually, just going through a few of these, we've also got Vincent Tanoe. He placed fifth in the Ljubljana Marathon in 2016. Excuse me, 2017. Now he's a 212 lad. Yeah. I couldn't find anything more recent on yes, him. Yeah, but yeah. you know, if, if this marathon is going to be in and around 215, we've quite a few athletes that are going to be close in here. And we have a couple of 208 men as well, but that's going back a few years. There's another Ethiopian, Haile Gameda. He ran 208 in Rome, but that's 2013. That's like obviously five years ago at this stage. Then we've got um, Joseph Jepkopal, he's another Kenyan. He ran 208 in Berlin in 2012. That's six years ago, so a bit past his um, uh, yeah, um, bit past uh, his sell-by That's what days. I've been looking at. Yeah. Kipto is from 2009. He's a 209.08. But you want to see what they're doing this year. Like, for him, while he has a 209, in Edinburgh this year, he ran 213.33. Now, again, fast, looking good. And Edinburgh's a tough enough marathon. Yes, now, yes. there's Hills. Yes. Yeah. Well, that Eugene, Eugene Coppinger obviously puts together yeah. an elite field. I think I think he lists these by 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 their by their chances of winning. In other yeah. words, Rogers been number one, then Michaela, then Tanoi. So like that's kind of the order of what what he would be to be. To be, to be yeah. um, but at the moment, fair play to Mick Tossi. We haven't seen her. The Irish guys haven't haven't knocked their put their heads up yet. Have they? David, David, yeah. David Flynn. Haven't seen David yet. Or a few bits on the lads. Or Sergio. Yeah, or I, w I was on to Sergio. I was asking for his aim in this, and um, he is four-time national champion in this. And his aim is to win the national title. Now, maybe that's why he didn't go with Mick, because he's thinking, hey, it's yes. gone a bit too hard. His PB is 215-14. So all our Irish lads are pretty, pretty close. Um, he did that in Berlin in 2015, so we know that's a fast co course. His DCM fastest is 217 from 2016, and he, that's the last time he won the national yes, title yes, on yeah. that one. I was asking about his weekly averages, and he said it's currently lower because, like Mick Clossy, he raced the European Championships in mid-August. Yes. So he said at the moment he's around 100 miles a week, so that's ahead of you next year, yes. Ian, when yes. you're in training. <laughs> um, and he said, he actually, he wanted me to say thanks to Azix for his shoe and kit because he changes his runners in and around every 300 miles or so. His longest run in preparation for this run was um, 40k about a month ago. Mm. Asking him again about his diet, he said not rocket science. He eats healthy meat, pasta, rice, lots of red veg. He's a friend that owns a fish shop in Clonmel, so that's where he gets good quality fish. And when I get on to chatting about Dave Flynn, there's another lad that talks about fish, and Katrina Jennings loves her fish. Yes, yes. Glass tool gets them there. But, um, I love to see a bit of um, normality in Sergio for me, the, the wine drinker. He said his guilty pleasure is a ga glass of wine or a good beer with his dinner. But he stops that two months out mm. from the marathon okay. to get himself going. And yes, seven days yes. beforehand, he cuts down on carbs for three or four yeah. days. And then for three days, he loads up and keeps himself hydrated, which is what we were talking about earlier. As you say, not rocket science, Susan. Not and you know, no, that's the old carbon loading, carbon loading which, yeah. uh, which Martin runs, and you have to do that. And by the way, I mean, the, the, the bit of 
alcohol or beer, a bit of guilty pleasure. There's no harm in that. No I always harm. remember um, no Frank Shorter, who won the Olympic marathon in 1972 and was actually in Ireland just a few weeks ago. And he was famous for having a couple of beers the night before uh, the Olympic marathon. When he, when he won in Munich in 1972, he had a, a litre of beer. And I was like, Frank, he's oh like, look, God. he's like, look, yeah. it helps me sleep. It, like, it relaxes yeah. me. It's good hydration. And I kind of thought, you know what? No harm in that, you know. If, yeah. if, if you feel it's giving you, a, you know, a, a bit of a, an edge to kind of look, I'm going to sleep better. Whereas, you know, sometimes, and Paula Radcliffe as well. Interesting story about Paula Radcliffe. Before every marathon, she'd have her porridge, she'd have her, she'd have her, um, her carbohydrate drink, whatever it was. And then she'd have like four squares of, dairy, of dairy milk chocolate. Yeah. And I was like, I asked her one day, what about why, why, why the dairy milk chocolate? He's like, I don't feel like. I have to deprive myself. I want to still be able to enjoy it. And I was like, okay, fair enough. So these things can work both ways. You know, sometimes... You know, when I heard that, Ian, um, the only thought in my head was, where's the rest of the <laughs> well, You can see where yeah. I'm coming from. Oh, I was like, well, I, I'm more of a Bourneville man myself. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I go for the dark rather than the okay. dairy milk. But That's very true, yeah, because most, most athletes are told to go for the dark chocolate. You know, I'm looking at Mick here in the Phoenix Park. Mick does so much of his running does here. He? Yeah, yeah, he loves the Phoenix Park. Did his last run there during the the uh, last week I was chatting. He'd just come from his last hard run in the park. Loves the park. You know, we are so lucky to have the Phoenix Park for running and all other sports, but particularly today we're here talking about the SSC Eritricity 39th running of this marathon. And for Dublin marathoners, people living around Dublin, this is the place to train. It is amazing. It's just such a fantastic facility. I was thinking, I was coming over today and I was thinking of a BHAA race I ran once in Phoenix Park and we finished coming up the Acres Road. Yes. And yeah. as we came up the Acres Road, the um, so you know it's a bit of a drag there from Denor Harriers up, we came up, the deer crossed the road and we had to stop, which was fantastic for me because my nemesis was just ahead of me and she actually had to stop, whereas I could see it and slow down and then passed her out. I love those deer. Yes, I love yes, those yeah, deer. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're the runner's best friend, the ally. It's always good to have an ally in the deer. <laughs> well, yeah. You never know Once when, when it's needed. It. Coming up around five miles at the stage, 25 minutes. So they're well on. You know, they're, they'll be averaging about, obviously, under the, under four minute, under just under the five minute miles at this stage. All still group, mile five, as I say that. Yeah, so they're all still group. I do see David Flynn knocking around there in the back with a hat on. He's, he's certainly in a nice position where he want, where exactly where he wants to be. Um, you know, and worth noting for it, there's Sergio is in the little gap on its yes. own just behind, and then Dave is behind that. Dave, this is his debut marathon, and it's a tough course for a debut marathon. I'm asking him as well, um, what was his aim for the today? And oh, he is in the group. He's actually yeah, on the back. I can of see the him group. there. Yeah, Sorry, definitely. That's the guy in the hat. That's him right there yeah. with the white hat. So he said his aim is to. He's expecting top three in the championship. Oh, I'd say so. Yeah. And I mean, that's the least of his ambitions. And he's look. You know what? Dare I say? So far, he's running a very smart race. He's just yeah. sitting in there. It's not the first of our women, I suspect. Maybe maybe a bit early no. to be seeing them. Um, no, I don't no, see them. No, no, sorry, I thought it might have been I thought it might have been the first just women. insulted some guy. Need one a good while back. But anyway, I think I think I think I go back to David Flynn. Yeah. I, mean, I think he's running a very smart race. Because I mean yeah. two things I remember about my first marathon, like you're <clears throat> you're definitely enthusiastic about it. You want to get yeah. out there, you want to get yourself in a good position, but you also know there's a, there's a great fear of the unknown. You have no idea what lies yeah, ahead. And that's it's only very really true. if you get to that twenty miles for the first time, you know. So I think I think he's so far he's running a very good race to, yeah. to be to be cautious. Well th this is he's he put all the work in. He said he's coming into this race in really good shape, ideal preparations. We said it earlier. He won the SSC Air Tristy half marathon and he broke the course record. He won that in sixty six twenty. He also won the rock and roll half and that with that he became the national champion. Again, he broke the course record in that. He won in Tullamore Half Marathon, Leinster Championship he became, and broke the course record in that. So not only has he been out there running races, winning races, taking them on, on, on but he's been doing PBs and course records. He won the 10K Dublin Race Series, and he, he was saying he's actually won every race in his preparation wow. for Dublin. Yes, yeah. I was asking him, he's, he's been coached by Andrew Castor. Now, do you remember his I wife, do, Dina? Course. Yeah, she Dina got Castor, yeah. in the in the Olympic mar in yeah, the Olympics in Athens. Looks like a bit of a spur to the front of the race there, Susan. It looks like the Kenyans are starting to mix it up here at the Ethiopians as well. Just as we say that, Nick drops back quite a little bit there. This is, so we're coming up probably Still about seven miles, I'd say. Um, is 
They're just coming up in seven miles, yeah, exactly. And I do feel at this stage that Mick is going to possibly let himself a little bit of a gap over the lead point, which is not a bad thing, it, because no. this, this is, this is, these counties now are turning it into, into a, you know, a decisive break as to who's going to actually win the race. I couldn't but, actually see Dave Flynn's hat there at that time, could you? Yeah, I'd say Dave is just biding his time. I'd say, yeah, it looks like there's a bit of a gap here now. Is it breaking through? Mick is still in there. No, you're right. It looks like Dave Flynn has gone off the back of that group, but that's not a bad thing. No, that's no. not a bad thing because I think I think he's he's got to pace himself. Yeah, he's let himself a little, a little bit of a gap yeah. there, but I think he's. I, look, there's a long way to go yet. A long, long way to go. And if I was if I was David Flynn's coach, I would not be worried because I think no, he, no. He, like, he knows there's a long way to go. Mick Clossy, I might be a little bit more worried about because he's starting to wobble a little bit. You know, if you're wobbling, if you're wobbling at seven miles. Um, he does have a very efficient style, though. He kind of he's got a kind of a long loping stride, yeah. which is. Um, which is, you know, which is, there's various ways of it. There's always those things, the perfect stride, but he's a bit more kind of that long loping stride, which, which is not, you know, which looks like sometimes he's laboring, but actually that's, that's just his running style. Here we are now, back at the masses coming through. Now these are, that's a three hour balloon, I think they're the green balloon, isn't it? So they're, they're, they're that's, that's, that's still pretty serious pace running, serious, at, that, yeah, running at that speed. Yeah. Like I always think, like I've run, I've run marathons and, you know, two and a half hours, three and a half hours, four hours, and believe me, they all, they all hurt the same. Like there's no such thing as a, a kind of a, I always a, a, say, a, a, the, the, go back and support because these people are out there longer than you. Yes, okay, exactly. Well yeah. finished. Um, interesting, I was asking Dave Flynn about his weekly mileage and he seems to be doing the most of all the lads I chatted to. He's up to 140 miles wow. a week. That's a lot, Ian, isn't it? Yeah, well, look, I mean, I think that's... There's a kind of a belief, though, that's coming back into fashion. Is I mean, it? you look at you look at the, you look at the, Mo, the Mo Farrows of this world. Yeah. And, and even back in the day when you had, I mentioned Frank Short or Dick Cooper. I mean, Dick Cooper was doing 110, yeah. 120 miles a week. They did, they did I mean, phenomenal. I mean, John models. Tracy, by the way. Now, John Tracy was one of these athletes. Still holds the Irish record with a 209, 19 from 19, um, 1988 in, 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 I think it was Boston or New York. But anyway, like, John would always, John would always underestimate his mileage. I did a few runs with John Tracy and, you know, he'd hammer out a 10-mile run and I'd be, I'd be looking at the watch and I, I knew exactly how far we're going. And, and John, I would put that down as an easy seven. And I'm like, John. What? I was like, John, that was 10 miles. <laughs> like, yeah, well, you know, but you know when he got going at three miles and I was like, oh my God. So, so John might be doing 120 miles a week, but he'd actually be doing like 140, 150. And John Tracy was doing 30 mile runs before Los Angeles in 84. Like he was going over 26 miles. So look, I'm saying that's not for everybody, no, yeah, yeah. but there is a theory that, that the high mileage is, um, so that's why Dave Flynn, that, that's obviously his yeah, approach. To this I, year's I was race. asking him for his longest run. He said it, it was a 24 mile run and a month before DCM at altitude. Wow, okay. Yeah. Well look, he's obviously in great shape. Yeah. Let's, let's see, let's oh, see exactly where- um, got a bit of a breakaway here. Coming out of the Phoenix Park Road. Yeah, this guy, this guy's taking a bit of a chance here in the front. Uh, we'll see where he is. He's coming there up here, Castle Knox. Seven miles, coming, coming up the Castle Knox gate. Yeah, more, yeah. And, they're, and they're coming but back down by Farm Lake. The They've passed the seven miles, yeah. They'll be going back into the park shortly. So this so is an interesting map here. Yeah. So that's the pink lady, that's the first lady. We don't know who it is, but that she's obviously just come past the six mile mark. And we can see, we can see where the, uh, where is the leading wheelchair is already coming up at halfway. Coming, yeah. coming up at the, uh, wow. coming, coming up by um, Mount Brown and through, through a part of, that part of South Dublin, which is like coming up to the halfway point. Yeah, Jim Here he is now. The, he'll enjoy those downhill moments. This is the time of the day as well. You see a lot more supporters coming out because not everyone's going to be up at half nine on a bank holiday weekend. But uh, but if you are, this is the time to get out. And while we're thoroughly happy that you're listening to us, you'll be able from the coverage here, you'll be able to see where the race is at. So you can get yourself out to um, support. Now, I who think is that's this guy social. Who, who is this guy making the break? Not, uh, this, that, that looks like the American to me. That looks like Seth Totten, the American guy, who I was told was a big, a big tall guy. Now we're waiting to see can we get his number. Um, but this, he's, this he's not, his BB is only two nineteen. Now it's from last year, um, yes. and he also did a one oh seven half marathon. But this year he's been in PB shape for his ten k twenty nine oh oh fifty eight and 10 miles 49 41. yes yeah so okay he's in shape for the shorter distances let's see how he gets going here when the tough gets going i mean it certainly is 
of an obvious break. Isn't yeah, it? I'd like to see what we have, we'll see if we get a mile split now. See what kind of see what kind of um because we have our we have our well, you brought along a very handy mile <laughs> shot here in front of us. Like so, see this is this is in kilometres, which is no harm. So this can, is this is what Elude Kip yes, Koji yeah, did yeah, yeah. for the Berlin Marathon yes, yeah. to give us the splits. So I was just um I I, I just printed it off to give us an idea of how much faster sure, he was sure, going. Yeah, yeah. Just to show like when you're standing out there, so people at at home now and in and around the Chapel Lizard area will probably be coming out of their houses shortly. And they'll see these athletes go by like wind yes. because they're going so fast. Kip Jogi was going faster. Yes, yeah. You know, I, know. I mean the speed that these guys do. I mean he was average in what, a two twenty odd, no, two thirty was it? Yeah. Um, it's about 4:35 per mile, just under 4:34. 4:30 yeah, per yeah. mile. I mean, if you if you if you put it, if you, I don't yeah. think I don't think uh, your average sort of treadmill goes that fast. No. If you put your treadmill on the top. <laughs> yeah. I tried to do that for one mile. I think I think it'd fall off. By the way, it's worth pointing out as well. I mean, we could talk about splits, and I've I've sat here over the years, jotting down marathon splits. You know, five miles, six miles, seven miles. You know what? They, in the end, they don't really matter. There's only two splits, in my opinion, that really matter. That's the halfway Perhaps, splits, yeah. because you know this is when you know exactly where you are, and then obviously the, the, what, what you finish in. Um, I mean, there's two ways of running. Like obviously there's the uh, the negative splits where you come back the second half of the race faster than the first half, or or where you go to the you know the, where you actually do the positive split where you run the first half quicker and then come back slower in the second half. But just as we say that, this does look like our. Um, Friendly American making a bit of a break for it here. Excellent. Look here, we are back at the front of the race. Yeah, they're breaking up all right. See, I, I, oh, I, I, didn't, gone back think, in. I didn't think our American guy was going to last too long. Um, Mick Claus is still hanging in there, which is all right. It's okay. Good to see that. Um, but look, this is a proper race now. Once you get out of the Phoenix Park and you get back into the more suburban areas and the crowd are out cheering them, it will be... Um, is that your debt here, the this is Tedesi yeah, Tola yeah. for the Ethiopia. Now, he has a PB of 204.49, so on paper, he is the fastest. It's in from it's from Dubai, but it's from 2013. Here we are. Oh, look at this. Oh, so we're back in our... This is my happy place, the Phoenix Park. <laughs> this is Tedesi, though. That looks like he's making a bit of a break. He really looks like he's gunning for it here. He's a 204, man. I mean, that's a serious PB, even if it is... I'm just looking at the back there, and Mick has gone back off that pace. Now, he's still with them. I'm not, I'm not massively concerned. Concerned, but he's certainly lost. What are we looking at there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About eleven in that. Yes, yes. He's definitely brought the, brought yep, lost touch to that group. Yeah, but look, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. But it, for me, it indicates that these guys up front are going for a faster time than normal. I mean, we'll have a look when we get that. Yeah, half there is there split. is there is a course bonus record. I think isn't there? Another another yeah. five thousand euros, which You've is got. Which, um, no, the bonus time bonuses are only for the Irish. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for the, the the prizes for the men and women first men and women get the same prizes so to finish this race first overall is 12,000 euro i'd be very happy with that second seven and a half and third six thousand now it goes down to tenth place yes yes on top of that then you have the ai national champion champions and first second and third gets 350 250 and 150. It's not bad yeah those time bonuses are so um certain times and and um, they range at the tip top if an Irish lad goes under 2.9 and an Irish lady goes under 2.30, they'll get 10,000. Yeah. Wheelchair guys then, first, second and third, 750, 500 and 250 for this race. So the potential prize pot for the winners here today, based on top 10 men, top three Irish and women, men and women, excuse me, wheelchair, and then the bonuses on top of that. There's a 120 thousand pot. Yep. We're coming up past our alma mater in here. Yes. Uh, the great Denor Clubhouse. The Great Denor Harriers Clubhouse and just around the corner there'd be there we go. The water station manned by the Denor Harriers athletes there. It's a great thing to have the the, the, the sort of the involvement of the clubs that, that you pass around the course. I know we obviously yeah. Rahini will maybe get involved at the course and Dun Drums out Dublin will get involved as it comes back to Klonski and who else? Rod Farnham I think are involved at different points. So it's a great issue to get the clubs involved. And Sports World then will be in and around um, Terranura uh, Bushy Park there. The interesting thing that you're saying, I, I'm, I'm curious, you're saying about we have a lower dropout than a lot. Yes. Um, I. 
I would put a bit of that down to the support around the course. Has to be, I mean, yes. I've heard so many people say, yeah, it's a tough course, but I like doing it because around the course you get tremendous support and it, it just doesn't stop. And if you think about it, we're looking here at the Phoenix Park. Look at all these people with their Dublin bikes. Beautiful, yes. Obviously made their way into the park. They're there to support. We're not looking at an area that is necessarily got a houses anywhere near there. So these people have been out for quite a time. You'll see these people back on their back bikes, back into town, so they get in to support all their friends when they're coming into the finish line here in Merrion Square. I know we keep going on about it, but they're so blessed by the weather. I know, oh, I know wow. we're I know we're obsessed enough at the best of times by Look the at weather. The trees but there. There's it, not a it, it makes such a difference in marathon really running. Does. And I think you know, if you're wet, it, it, it just automatically makes it more difficult because you know, first of all, you're, you're sweating on top of that, but it just I just find running in the rain but you know it's grand if you're doing an easy an easy long run on a sunday but you're actually racing in the rain here we go mile 10 our american guys come back into form here um so we'll see how this exactly this this, this race unfolds but like this there's certainly there's certainly going to be um a bit of a bit of sort of shifting between these leaders as, yeah. we, as we as we come up, come up to a halfway point which as i did mention is the real the real first interesting split when we get a real indication of how fast they're on course for. I suspect at this stage, I mean, I don't think it's sub 210. I suspect sub, somewhere around the 212 mark, I, su I suspect might be the sort of pace that they're on. Um, but this guy's giving a bit of a bit of a spurt here as well. And it's the this, second time he's done we'll this. See, we'll see how, the, how, he, how, he, how he, I'm not quite sure what his tactics are. Is he trying to get away from them or is he going for a time or is he, um, is he trying to get a break? But it's certainly, he's certainly very, he's put him to the front there and that's committing, you know. Yeah. And again, my own experience, sometimes if you're feeling good, you know, just hit the front and just belt out a couple of miles at a good pace because that, that's, you just, it's sometimes easier just to kind of run within yourself like that. Whereas if you're sitting behind somebody, there's always a kind of a sense you have to kind of watch them and you're kind of thinking, are they going to go? But if you're in the front, you're in control, you're the one who's setting the pace. And sometimes that can be, can be reassuring. Just as I say that, he's making a bit of a break. So we'll see. I'd look like Mick Clossy has dropped off this group. Yeah, I didn't which, see him there. Which is, um, which is not, not, a, not, not a great sign at all. Um, but we'll, we'll Coming into Inchcore now, Ian. So um, we're lacking a bit of support out there. Folks, anybody listening in the Inchcore area, get yourselves out now i know i'd love to for you to stay and and uh, listen to us but you might as well get yourself out there and get to see these athletes passing by some of these uh, international athletes i yeah i have a feeling we're going to get a fast race here actually today. trying to actually still trying to identify this lead guy now i don't I actually i told us one of the americans guys i don't think it is i actually think it could be um it could be one of the neutral athletes. This could oh, be one of the two neutral. Oh, um, there's, there's two. There's, there's two neutral athletes. Yeah. These are obviously former Russian, Russian. athletes. Yeah. Okay, and I think I think that we're looking at one of those guys. I thought it was one of the American guys, either Totten or Curly. It turns out it could be Shutov or Alexa. Alexa. These are the two of the neutralized athletes. In other words, Russia being currently banned from track and field. Okay, if you're if you are if you are actually running as a neutral athlete, it means that you've been cleared to run to be clean. by the IAAF. Yeah. And I think that's who we're looking at here. Okay, we're going to uh, have to complain and ask them to get those those names bigger for us. But either way, either way, it's it's still it's still um it's still early days. Look, I don't think anybody's going to consider this to be a, a a decisive break at the stage of the race. As they come back, they're going to be they're soon going to be back over the um over the south side where the things yeah. are, things are going to start heating up a little bit because that's when you get to halfway and then as I say. <laughs> This is what I did mention the hills at around 20 miles at Milltown Bridge. Yeah, that's coming up, killer. Coming yeah, up the Klonsky yeah. Road. Worth mentioning those two lads. There are neutral um, athletes approved. Um, Alexev was approved only this July. He's got a PB of 213.40 from Moscow in 2016. And yes. in Sochi in 17, he ran a 104.43. I couldn't find anything for him more current than that. For Shutov, his PB is from 2016. It's 211.26 run in Russia but recently his recent form in the summer he ran a 30 44 10k not bad for Marathon decent, yes, yeah, yeah, decent decent exactly and again we don't know what that course was like yes we've got a finish lad in there but he's only 225 so I don't think it's him we're trying to suss out that name Anyway, either way, I don't think I don't think this is going to be the size of break. No, not, it, not it, when it you isn't. Not, it when, isn't. not when you have ten again. East African runners uh, literally on your on your back. But there's the press bus. Now I'd normally be sitting at the press bus following the race. Um, this is where you get a good close-up oh, yeah. of, of all the um, of all the athletes. But uh, it's. Um, it's uh, it's 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 grand anyway. Just going to see see that race. But the other thing as well about the elite race here, I think 
when the, when the Kenyan guys go for it, I mean, it's a nice way. Like they, they, they sometimes their, their tactics can be sometimes a little bit reckless, and they just suddenly make this break. And, and you I've know, seen that you happen. know, and again, it yeah. can work both ways. And I think yeah. that we haven't seen that yet, where somebody just puts in a massive spurt and really goes for it. So that's why I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced that this is um. We've got a, a couple break. of um, South Africans in here worth mentioning, Joel Money. Um, in July of this year, he ran a half marathon PB in Port Elizabeth of 102. Not bad. Um, this is his debut marathon. He, he's worked his way up from 800 to steeple. 10K in 17 of 28.49. Handy bit of yeah. turn of speed there, yeah. That's what you want. And again, yeah. this comes down to the last 10K of a race, which invariably does. That's when your 10K time kicks in. And again, I go back to some of the examples of marathon runners over the year. I mentioned John Tracy. People forget John Tracy ran the 10,000 meters in those, Mos in those uh, LA Olympics as well and finished, I think he finished decent. 9th or 10th, and um, Frank Shorter, who I mentioned earlier on, who won the Olympic Marathon in, 80 t in 1972, had also run the 10,000 metres, and I think he finished 5th uh, or 6th, so like, there's no harm in having that 10k speed in your legs, as you, as, especially if it comes down to yeah. um, the last if 10k any, of a race. Yeah, exactly. So some of our wheelchairs getting caught by. Isn't that so nice, the lads passing by? Coming up the monuments here, yeah, what a sight. I mean, the colours this time of the year are just like, it's almost Aren't like a sort of kaleidoscope of, of colour, and I think it's, I mean, for any runner like this, you can't help but enjoy that. And to see, yeah, it looks like one of our neutral athletes is making a break here, all right. Now, again, I'm not quite sure what the, what the tactic is. If you're feeling good, we've had some Russian winners of Dublin in the past. We've had plenty of Russian winners. Actually, with Russia, Ukraine, you go back over the years, there was a guy called Alexei Sokolov. I remember him. I think he was a two-time winner of Dublin in the past. Um, there was another Ukrainian guy who won at Neurov in 2008. Um, Russian women as well have always, have always fared well in the uh, in the Dublin Marathon like this uh, maybe maybe something to do with the climate could be do you know I haven't mentioned any of the masters they tend to get subsumed in the group in the crowd but Gary Crossan um, is uh, gracing this time he's the five time national yes, champion yes. you know we uh, and as a master he's in the over 40 age group his coach Teresa McDade sorry she was his coach then when he when he was um, uh, racing then so we were just talking about him during the week he's changed clubs he's gone to brothers pierce because he's living in dublin now and he's been up there training with the lads it's going to be very interesting to see how he, how he runs of course gary married to the great maria mccambridge yes. so they have time to be training together but last year the over 40 was won by fergal whitty from denor harriers um, in a time of 2.30, wow. 40, which was his PB That's over 40. That's a good time, yeah. No pressure for you yeah, next year, yeah. no pressure. <laughs> um, and he's, he's, I've heard he's in good shape, so looking forward to see what he can do today. The, uh, sorry, they're never going to win, and I don't mean to be preempting. But of course we have Gary O'Hanlon. Yes, yeah. I tend not to talk about Gary as a master yes, because he's so phenomenal as a senior athlete. And don't forget, Gary O'Hanlon's in this race last year as a master at the age of 43, which is the Irish record for um, over 40. Gary ran a PB of 218.53 to win the national championships. He also holds the Irish over 50k record and he's self-coached. Yes, yeah. And as we look at our elite lads here now, the breakaway has gone back. So we're back into our group of what about 11 there now, lads. So a bit of cat and mouse, isn't it? They're all it looking really at each yeah, other. Yeah. And, and by the way, look oh, who's Freddy. in that field. Freddy Sittuck sitting in that field. And now Let's I was, I, not I, forget. I, he, I did say yeah. this, this guy was one to watch, even though he wasn't in great form. Because you know what? He did something similar last year. He did, you're he right. He sat in the pack and yeah. he I think he was, was a fourth overall. He was fourth overall. Right last up there. Year. So yeah, like, yeah. that's so. There's our Irish First interest now. I'm home. glad I checked this earlier on in the week because I was because there was a lot of confusion last year. Yeah. He was the first Irish finisher, and whether he was whether he was going to be. Um, eligible for the national title he was given the title on the day he was then there was a bit of an inquiry and no yeah. no disrespect to gary handle he wanted to know he wanted to be quite sure what's Absolutely, going on here you know yeah. and, then, and then i don't really know um peter but i i know freddie from on the scene yes he runs every race to be seen in a road race in the country and he supports rohini shamrocks as well i was down at the um the leagues during the summer both the um the lead up to the leagues the track and field leagues and then into the final and freddie is there doing his bit taking part for the club he is a real rohini man so it's a shame i do understand why they have to have that rule but 
I, you know, because I've seen Freddie racing for Rahini so much, I think it is a bit of a shame. We're on to the South Circular Road now, Lance. Mile 12, yeah, coming yeah. up to the halfway, the golden halfway point, as I call it, yeah. because, you know, it's, it's the point of no return, as in, like, you're on the way home. And I think that's a, it's a, such a psychological barrier when you get to halfway. Um, again, our neutralised athletes making a bit of a break here. I mean, if he gets away, I mean, it's, it's, his, it's still early days. This is time now to try this. Okay, you know who this is. I'm not, I can now confirm. Okay, have we I got go it? back to my original point. It is the American Totten. Like, so oh, I, great. I was right the first time. Um, I was, wasn't sure whether it was one of the neutralised athletes, but I thought when I, I was told the Totten was a big tall guy, so that's that's, it. that's who it is. His wife is a marathon runner as well of, of some repute, but she's not racing here Sorry, as yeah. a pack, which is what they've been doing at the yes. moment. And let's not forget, Totten's PB is 219. As I said, he's in reasonable shape this year from his his uh, PB's over 10k and 10 miles, but he hasn't got the same time, fast times that the lads behind him have. So they're more comfortable going. We've got four and five minutes on on a marathon than you, Totem. So off with you. We'll keep you in our sights. We'll keep you coming and going, and let's see how it goes. You mentioned there, and I just want to get on, we haven't mentioned the women at yeah, all. We, yeah, we need to, we need um, to get an yeah. update on those. And I mean, you mentioned there about the Irish winning abroad, and I think with the marathon and the 39th running here of the SSE Electricity Marathon, it would go, we could not but mention Sinead Diver, the 41-year-old Mayo native, who ran a PB of 225.19 to win Melbourne earlier this month. Now, unfortunately for us in Ireland, um, she's now declared as Australian, which is Yeah, I mean, look, there's a bit of, a a bit of poli not politics, yeah, what's know, the word? Yeah. It was a bit of a, bit of a misunderstanding, I might be the best with them. What what think? Think? In terms of, like, she Have wanted to run for Ireland yes, in, the, did, in, the, yeah. in the 2015 World Championship. She had the qualifying time. Yeah. Athletics Ireland said, well, actually, we're going to we're going to lower the standard, make the standard tougher. I think they made it maybe 45 seconds quicker, or maybe more, maybe two minutes quicker than the IWF standards. The idea being there, they felt they were maybe sending athletes who were standard was a bit soft. She couldn't go because she was, I think, 15 seconds outside the end of the Arden standards. She had the, yes, that was it. She um, had the official, yeah, but she didn't exactly, have the AI exactly. standard. Now, That's now, an now, when I say misunderstanding, if the Athletics Ireland, now, I'm not going to blame them, but they could have had a little bit of foresight and said, look, OK, well, listen, here's an athlete who's very, very close. She really wants to run for Ireland, but they, they, were, they, were, they refused to bend. And, and then she got an offer from Australia, and like, she, was, she would have been, what, 38, 39 at the time. So she turns around and goes, of course, look, how many more chances are we going to get? So yeah. I think you can't blame yeah. her for that. Yeah, and um, here she is at 41, running 220. Second, the second fastest time uh, by an Irish woman. Irish woman. Faster yeah. than Sonia Sullivan. She's got a bit of a relationship with Sonia Sullivan, as yeah. her Sonia's husband, Nick Bedeau, coaches, uh, coaches her sometimes in Melbourne. And obviously Sonia's been encouraging her a lot. But uh, look, it's, it's, it's one of those... It's a kind of it's it's, it's I think it's disappointing I think that yeah, you know that's that she can't run for Ireland but look at the same time she feels Irish and you know yeah. and I spoke to her after Melbourne there a few weeks ago and her exact words were she's running for two countries she runs for Ireland that's her family that's her home but she's run for Australia because that's where she lives that's where her two children were born that's probably where she's going to spend the rest of her life so it's a uh, it's kind of a nice thing to have if you think about it yeah. but I know where her heart is and you know what they say about the uh, you know taking the Irish Irish woman out of yeah. out of, out of, out of <laughs> Ireland. Um, Oh, here we go, a few more leprechauns here. I like, I like that outfit, actually. That looks pretty cool. It's still heavy. Um, and we just flicked there. They're just about to turn into Dolphins Barn. It's a shame we haven't got the camera on it because I always find the atmosphere in Dolphins Barn yes. unbelievable. There we go. That's halfway point coming up right here. I know that for a fact because I ran, I, I know when it, I did a kind of a recce on this course. Yeah. The halfway point is right around here. And look, it looks like they're going to start. They're all they're all still packed together. Like, it's, it's almost like a sort of a... A middle distance race and they're waiting to kick no one's really gone for that break yet um trying to see the clock here yeah. you can't actually see it with the trees oh yeah i understand see can we get a split it's about 109 109 yes yeah, so miles that's 13 109 okay so there we go 109 so that they're 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 certainly so it's not fast even, it's not fast and that's why totem is doing yeah. is doing well there as i said he's a 219 109 56 god that's actually very slow Isn't i'm it? very surprised i mean yeah. that's 218 pace so they, they fairly crawl the first half you know that also explains why mick yeah. he was so frustrated at the start trying yeah. to get them to come and race him i mean and I, it looks like he's paid 
for his lead. Yeah, yeah. Which is a real I mean, look, I mean, it's, it's you can see there's not big gaps there. Like, there's not big gaps at all. I mean, Mick is still down that road. Like he's not far away. Yeah, um, let's hope he gets back. In it this. explains why the American is sitting in there because I mean, 280. Now they will drop that. They're going to drop. There's going to be. This will be a negative split for sure. Like, for gonna, sure. They're going to come agree. back. They're yeah. going to come back a lot quicker. But as of now, as of now, they're on about. They want about 218 pace, which is like, God, that's going to be one of the slowest wins in Dublin in a long time. Interesting that one of our Kenyans is taking it on because he's obviously got his split there and went, hey, let's move it out here. It's strange. It's such a, such a perfect day I know. for marathon running. Yeah, hasn't, hasn't, hasn't transferred to the actual times, but it doesn't always work that way. I'm going to, while we're looking at the guys here, I'm going to give a little info on the, uh, the women because um, the likelihood is we're going to stay with the men here. On the Irish women um, in the race, and who I'm expecting to... Oh, here we great. go. This is a good Thank graphic you. here so now. We'll see them. They're just coming up to the now. past 11 mile mark 11 through miles Kilmainham. Great. Right. So there's no doubt that they're, they're I'd say that, that I wouldn't be surprised if they're at a lot quicker projected times. Um, then, yeah. Yeah, that's very true, Ian. Yeah, I'm, and I know that Irish woman, Lizzie Lee, she's out there working. She's 38 years of age. I'm sure she won't mind me saying yeah, that. Her aim is to win the national title. For the marathon which she hasn't won before she ran she's only run dublin city marathon in 2006 and her pb is 232.51 from berlin that qualified her for the olympics i was asking her about her mileage too she's on about 90 a week and she said her diet is really healthy yes. from monday to saturday but she has her treats on sunday after her long runs which she's definitely allowed yes um, I also was curious of where she's going after Dublin, and she said right now Dublin is on her mind. She's a busy, busy lady. She's a mom of two. She's a one-year-old and a four-year-old, yes. and a full-time job. And she was saying running is a hobby. Now, lads, running may be a hobby, but she trains really, really hard, and I know she's in great shape. She's had a hectic few years, ran in Rio, had a baby, and all that that involves. Then she gets to the Euro Cross, then she gets the World Half Marathon and then the Euro Championships. And here she is now in the SSE Air Tristy Dublin City Marathon. And I'm quoting Theresa McDade, who's the AAI Ladies International Manager. And she told me she always loves having Lizzie on any team. She knows exactly what she'll get from her and she knows that she'll get 100% effort and commitment. I'm expecting big things yes, from Lizzie yeah, here today, yeah. Ian. I wouldn't be surprised if she goes close to her PB. Yeah. And by the way, a great, yeah, you spoke very highly about that, I agree, and a great motivator as well. She's got a great attitude, like, you know, she really encourages people around her, so, yeah. you know, I think she's been great for the sport. And I mean, you mentioned she ran Dublin back in 2006, which I mean, she was very much a late developer. I think she, that was more right. kind of for fun, that she almost ran, if there's such a thing as running a marathon for fun. Yeah. Um, but here, this is coming up to the finish of the wheelchair. I think it's, well, that's a quick, quick glimpse of the wheelchair. I it's think got, it's a, it'll it's be a, another it's got 15 quite, minutes. Quite a way to go, yet, yeah. yeah but, um, the other lady then on the Irish, two, two ladies to mention on the Irish, Katrina Jennings is 38. And I asked her for her aim for a Dublin City Marathon. And she said, I just want to enjoy it. I want to run the best I can. She's coached by um, Theresa McDade. Yes. And that's happened in the last year and a half. And she said it's a completely different well, approach to the marathon. It's more relaxed, but it's more focused on her key sessions. She's a new program and a new approach from Teresa, but she also has a new job and she's putting horrendous hours into that. So she's having a difficulty balancing her work and her key sessions. But she really enjoys training. She does a lot of training on her own and she trains with the TT racers based from Trinity and down in Riggs End when she can fit them into her work commitment. There's a girl who told me that she, her diet's pretty straightforward. She eats as naturally as she can, avoids processed foods, sufficient fruit and veg. And she's another girl on the fresh fish. She's a fish shop in glass tool that wow. she gets most. Yeah, loves her fish. Um, for her marathon then, she doesn't change her diet. She likes those high five drinks and the energy gels. Asked her for her toughest race to date and obviously London, London yes. yeah, was a disaster for her because she had that injury, she ran with that stress factor. Yes. I mean, to finish that was tough enough. And she yes. said, it might have sound cheesy, she said to me, but that all races are tough. Yeah. I think they're, going, they're definitely going to be in and around our top two women. Lizzie, unless she has a disaster, I think, could be heading towards one, two, three in the overall marathon. And just one other Irish girl to mention, Zola Flynn from Sligo. She's a PB of 255.25 25 from 2006, but she also ran 255.28 last year, 2007. Uh, she won the Cork City Marathon this year. Her father's Ray Flynn, 
Wow. The, yeah, yes, the Euro, yes, you know yes, very well. You're yes. a race walking judge. And when I heard of her dad, I just went, oh, Zola. Zola Bud. That's who she was <laughs> named after. Well, see, we get a glimpse of those as the race there. goes on. But here's the men's race now. They're all grouping up together here. Like, yeah, so this we're is, this back is, in again. This is, coming, this, is, this is where the race begins for proper, uh, heading in towards 14, 15 miles. And they're going to be long now to look up. Freddie Sitok still sitting there at the back. That's the Irish, the Irish representative, the Irish club, Rohini. He's out of that main group. But um, we've seen a few Briggs. We saw Tola go to the front there. That's the that's the Ethiopian seem to yeah. seem to pick a bit of a go. And Manje, he's one of the he's one of the um, South African runners. He's been knocking around the front there for a while as well. You can kind of you know the South Africans always have a slightly different style of running than the Kenyans and Ethiopians. Um, so that's him at the front there now. But I still think I still think someone's going to break it a decisive for sure. Have we seen Bernard Rochich at all at the stage of the race? The defending champion, a man around it. Don't forget he's got a 210 PB. He ran 215 here last year. Given the fact that they only went through halfway in 70 odd minutes, like that's going to be well within his, um, you well know, within his pace. I, I he, he is, he's got, he's got a 210 PB. He went, ran this last year in 215.53, and I have a recollection that there were two or three of them went on a break and they broke away together. Yes, yes. He knows this course, and I think he's here for the win. We haven't seen him stick his nose out yeah, of that yeah. group at all. And here are people who are definitely not here for the win, no. but enjoying the run as <laughs> the NCAA. And here's what, here's what I talk about the support comes out of, as the race progresses, and you know, that's a great thing to see. Like, and it's, it's later in the race, you need the support. Like, you don't, you don't need support in the first five or ten miles. It's only really when you come out that the support, the support kicks in. And we're seeing that now we're seeing how the um how the actual the supporters are kind of coming out and giving it that bit of a giving it that bit of a lift which is which which is really what we need is that manje now i think the south african guy looks it to, is, look, yeah. looks to be making a break so he's um he seems to be throwing down the uh throwing down the gauntlet a, li a little bit to see can he can he get a bit of a distance but you can even hear the noise now you can hear those decibels rising you can hear the uh, the crowd making their presence felt and it's a beautiful thing because again i know from my own experience that like it, you do hear you do hear every cheer and you, sometimes you, you have mixed feelings like somebody says oh looking good and you're like well yes really it's, it's easy for you to say <laughs> yes but they all count trust me every 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 cheer counts and we're hearing that now as, as they come around us it's the Phoenix Park Monument, which is, um, they, they've got a long way to go. They're, you know, still, they're still going to be up to three or four miles. They, you, you said this at the, at before the half. You said this actually at the 10 mile. This race hasn't started yet. And you're right. We've said it at the half. This race hasn't started yet. And I'm still convinced hearing that this race hasn't started yes, yet. Yes, yes, yeah. Because you've got, there's three or four have been hanging around right in the middle. They haven't even gone to the edges. We can't even really see their names there. And they're just like, this is easy. I'm just I'm just settling in here. We are definitely going to get negative slip splits here. We're definitely going to get a very fast second half. And I still no one has actually taken it on. They they've done little attempts at breaks, but they haven't been definitive enough. Yes, and that's where I think Bernard Rotate's experience will come in. He'll know that like, you know, he knows what it takes to win this race and um Normally, the defending champion has number one. So we can see, can we see? It's all written by names. It's anyway. names, yeah. Which is probably, yeah. It probably is. I don't know which is, which is better, names or numbers. I mean, yeah. I think it's nice to have your name on your number, but I'd it's actually... It's great for support if you're yes. standing out there and you can see them. We've just gone by... Um, Come, sorry, we're heading right towards the Walkinstown yes, roundabout yes. now. So my husband, who is in bed, might get up <laughs> now and go out. God love him, hasn't seen yeah. the air since Thursday. Wow, OK. It's been a long day for him, I suppose. Coming up to, yeah, this should be coming up for 14, 15 miles now, yeah. And we're I think about this, 400 metres from this the is still, This is still where, where, the, um, where, the, where the race is going to unroll, or start to unroll a little bit. We will certainly see uh, Freddie Sittuck is still hanging in there. I don't think, I don't think, um, I don't think Mick Claus is too far back down the road. I think he's actually hanging in there quite well. I think there's he's, I, think, I can see there's certainly bodies back there, which suggests that the gaps haven't been. I don't see him, Mick. I see Freddie's just off back there. Oh, there's Mick. I, I hope that's Mick now, just turning the corner. Yeah, that's him. Gaps haven't been that decisive, which is, which is kind of a positive thing to see. Yeah, good to see. And uh, coming up now, as we were, we've just been saying there, to the Walkinstown roundabout, always a good crowd here, always a good atmosphere. But again, what are we looking at? Our nice big group here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're down to ten now. Yes, yeah, we're going to get a, we're going to get a, we're going to get a click on the leaders here, actually. So this, this will give us an exact, this will give us. So it is David Manja, as I thought was up there, yeah. 
Um, so that's this 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 is what we need. This is kind of what we're looking for. So that's the um, so actually past halfway in 106.50, right? So that, that's slightly slightly less than we thought. Um, okay, just going back now to the got a bit of an update there on the top women. So at half, wow, Catherine Morrissey has gone through. It's still very early on. That, 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 that's, um, 10K, sorry, that's 10K, 10K yeah, they've okay. gone through. Yeah, I knew they have to have my heart attack there. No, that's still very no, early it's definitely days. 10K. 46 minutes for Catherine Morrissey, 46.21. Yes. Catherine Hanlon is at 46.23, and Mary Brady then is at... Yes, well, actually, here we go. Ah, this, here we this, go with this the, is the um, ah, Lizzie Lee's this hanging is in there. Lizzie Lee's with the... Lizzie Lee is with the... Um, Lizzie Lee is with the... Uh, Lizzie Lee top three oh, here we go we're getting a first tip to the ladies at the stage of the race so this is good to see this is what we've been waiting for for a while um great i think lizzie lee is sitting in that mean bunch so this is like this does, does look like the uh, it does look like the kenyan girl who's been oh there's lizzie Marisa see her Debuso, just behind yeah. in the chasing pack actually it's the ethiopian it's the two so ethiopians one two there's three ladies in there yes it's the and, and it's frank halligan from crusaders because okay. i can see him he'd be happy so we've got three ladies there and Lizzie just Lee. behind. Yeah. Lizzie's about, what, wow. 40 metres? Yes, yeah. She's in good shape. She, she is. is in good shape. She's hanging in there. She's so our there. ladies that we're expecting to see in here, Rinalda Kerji from Lithuania, that's not her. No, it's the Biso, no. it's the Biso leading. That's the Kenyan woman. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, this is Ethiopian. Pardon me, pardon me. And then the fellow Ethiopian, oh, Uto Gadefe, is seconds. And then we have... Um, Jeff Chirk. Then we have uh, then we have um, Chip Churcher and then Lizzie Lee. So they all they, they right. came through 10k, uh, 36, 55, 10, 10k. So like that's 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 steady going. That's yeah. That's that's that's, 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 that's certainly decent, decent going. Let's see, give me a quick black that's in great. the um, Jeff Churcher. She was busy. She in 2018 she won the Belfast Marathon in 2:41.17 and Edinburgh. So this year yes. she won Belfast yes. and Edinburgh. She's in that little lead group there. That's good to Gadefe see. Gadefe placed third in Dublin in 2016 in 2:36, but her PB is 2:32. That's from Barcelona in 2:16. Now that's Lizzie Lee's um, PB. Yes. Misera Dubiso, who's in the lead there, she placed sixth in Rome earlier this year in 2.36.27. That would be an easier course than here. So that's our top three, Kenya and two Ethiopians. Gaddafi and Dubuso are the Ethiopians. Jeff Chiri is the Kenyan. And delighted to say in, third, in fourth place there, it looked to us like Lizzie Lee. Yes, Lee's. yes, yeah. OK, well, I'm glad we got that update because it was important to get a bit of an update in the women's race. But they're, they're, they're relatively tightly punched. Punch, I should say. There may be some punching later on in the race, but it's for the moment, we'll stick to the, pu the punched. And um, we can see the men's race, they're all tightly packed there. So I was a little bit off on the halfway line. I, we, were actually, we finally actually got some official halfway splits. Oh, I'm not cool. quite sure what the clock we got. So they were actually 106.50 at halfway. Oh, right. Again, that's, that's different. So 67 to so around about 214 pace as opposed to 218 pace. But still, there was certainly, um, and as I say, our American guy, Sutton, is in there. So it's good to see him there also. But the, they're all, they're all, um, they're all bunched there nicely. So it's, uh, it's uh, still very much early days. That's great. Just looking to see Freddie Sutter went through. Yeah, he went through with the leaders. leaders. So our half marathon yep. pace, we, we misinformed you because we were looking at the clock here. It's 106.51 approx. So that's a nicer time. Yes, yeah, 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 no, yeah it happier is, yes. with that. So we go back to women though. I think what happened there was we actually we actually we actually got the walkers who were at the halfway line. So we'll see if they're at the main the main bunch been through yet. So uh, no, they're they're not they're not involved actually. No, so it's 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 yeah it's 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 the people who are um, they haven't reached halfway yet. I don't to, to, to best I can see, but we know it's a two it's a two Ethiopians, Kenyan Lizzie Lee, and see can we see where um where uh, where she gone through halfway yet? Uh, One seventeen twenty four. Yes, okay, so that's okay. halfway for the women. So they you know, they're they're all about two thirty four, two thirty five, two thirty face. Yes, for the women. Brilliant. So that's, that's, Thank uh, you. We're just getting a bit of technical <laughs> advice here, and we're, we're doing very badly. Well, no, I'm glad we got the Yeah, this bits. is great, though, yeah. It brings, brings us right up to date yeah. to where we are. We didn't realise we had that information here, so which is we'll, fantastic. We'll go back to the men here and see where they're So where now we're going at. to get really nerdy with our timing, in. <laughs> they're still all there. Well, at least I got the Americans right. It's definitely Seth Totten that was in there. Yeah, I wasn't quite great. sure. Let me see if we go back and see. Mick Clossy is there. Gary O'Hanlon and David Flynn seem to be running together. Um, O'Hanlon... so... Mick did 107. 68, 11. 16, 68, 29, 
for um, for David so Flynn. David this Flynn's is the halfway going back line. backwards. Gary then is one minute and a couple of seconds behind Mick. Dave Flynn now has dropped back. This is the halfway mark. He's got, he's dropped back behind Gary by 20 seconds. So might have gone out a bit too hard. But look, this race ain't over. That's only the halfway point. So 108 29 for Dave Flynn there yeah. at the halfway point. And we're coming down gone through the Palmersford Road. We're heading down now um, Kimmage Road West. So anybody in, even in the Terran, your area, yes. start making your way out now to get on support. Mile 16. Mile 16. And let me see, how many have we got here? Have we got a dirt, about a dozen 11. left? Mile 16 is maybe 11 groups. So look, this is the thing about the, our friend the American is hanging in there, Seth Thompson. You know, we, yeah. the guy we got a slightly misidentified early on, but um, he's bringing a bit of the international flavour to the race because it's, it's is, basically yeah, Americans versus South Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya. and Kenya. Yeah. They seem to be the three nationalities at the stage of the race. Um, nice to see an American mixing with us. But look, I still think, I, don't, I'm not, I wouldn't root David Flynn out yet. He seems to be nope. pacing himself. He's yep. averaging about 5.15 miles. That's probably the pace that he's on. He's probably yeah. thinking, I'm going to stick to this well, kind of mile. Well, I'm thinking that. And First just, marathon. You know, he's, he's smart. You know, I mean, he's yeah. know, he knows exactly what he wants to do. And if he's the guy who's been winning race the last few weeks, he's obviously confident to kick it in the We're last back few miles. With our ladies here at 14 miles. And a lovely shot of Frank there going ahead in his lovely Crusaders vest. Beside the ladies, we have a Rahini lad there. They'd be delighted with that company. And our three ladies there, Jeff Churker, Gedefe and Dubiso, and um, apologies for my pronunciation. They're yeah. looking very comfortable there, Ian, aren't they? Yeah, no, it is. It's the way she's running. Like, she ran 237, 236. Oh, this is the this is the Dubiso, the Ethiopian is leading yeah. in Rome. Uh, I think that's I think that's in April. That's a good time. Like that, that's certainly yeah, that's, that's certainly year. would, yeah. would win her well. That's a great shot of the Phoenix Park Monument to set against this blissful autumn sunshine day. And you, you know, you think of <laughs> you think of many of the poets like. Um, Luke Kelly and the Dubliners as well, singing about this type of days in Dublin. It really is a day sent from heaven. And before I forget, uh, so I want to give a very special shout out to um, Mary Nolan Hickey, the only, oh, the only woman who's completed all Dublin her. marathons yeah. Um, yeah. since going back to the first one in 1980. Yep. She's out there somewhere ready, running for the, um, I think she's raising funds for the Irish uh, uh, Lifeboat Association, which is, which, is her, which is one of her causes. So wish her absolute best of luck. You know, and, she's actually going to be walking today because she ran Ireland. She ran the perimeter there during the summer um, for the RNLI and did a fantastic job. And when she got home, she was home about three weeks and innocuously fell and um, dislocated her shoulder. Oh, wow. Oh I know. God. But this is her. She's 38 done. She ran one of these, well, ran jog walked when she was eight months pregnant. My God, And yes. she said, I am not not going to do this so yes, she's doing yeah. her 39th fantastic. today she's an awesome woman fantastic i'm going to mention Anne curly as well in the over 45 age group Anne has 11 sub three hour marathons and i'm wow. certain all of them were as a master athlete coached by the great jim mcnamara god yes, rest him yeah. but she feel, still fo she still follows his really sessions okay the late great and, jim yes. yeah and uh, her fastest marathon was 253 Dublin is her fifth marathon of this year. She's run Derry, Longford, Berlin and Wicklow. Not in the shape of her lifetime currently, but she's just getting out there running. She's yes, carrying a few yeah, niggles, yeah. but worth a mention there. Another Denor Harrier athlete yeah, there just yeah, by chance, yeah. yeah. Here goes our man Seth again, hitting the front of the men's yeah. race here. Really going for it. Like, it's exciting to see he's making, a, he's making a go of it. Like, it's nice to see him mixing it up because Look, again, I don't mean this in a bad way, but sometimes the Kenyans can be a little bit coy to just sit in there. They don't, they don't really make a sort of an exciting I, I race. Just, yeah, I don't feel like they're here to race. I hear they're, I feel they're here to win. You know the difference? Yes, yes, yeah, Whereas yeah. Whereas Toten, and it makes much more of a difference now for him because he's coming in with a 2.19 PBE, wasn't it? Yeah. So, Ian, he's the one that's been trying to make mm, the breaks yeah. here. And when we thought he'd run a, a 109, he'd yeah, actually the dark run a 106. I have to say, I knew, I knew very little about it this year. Yeah. So. I found these two from him yeah. on his um, got a IAF ranking. He's on it, and his PBs for 10K, 290058 yeah. and 10 miles, 4941. So that's this year. Yeah. So we know he's in good shape. He's obviously, he's obviously, he's obviously feeling comfortable as well, which is you yeah. know, which is which. But at that, that pace yeah. as well, like two, 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 two 14 pace is hardly, it's hardly only, world record. I'm curious with you on this one. My only concern in this 
is his it's like a fart succession he's kind yes, of do you know yes, what I mean yeah, he's yeah. like doing a burst then he's going back then yes. he's doing a burst now maybe that's the way he runs yes. we've often run with athletes like that and they annoy you because you think you have them broken and then they come back at you yes yeah but it, You'd have thought that that's not the best way of conserving energy. What is amazing here on the ladies, and I just saw her head, Lizzie Lee had just caught up and she was right on the wow. back. I could see her head. You, that is amazing. Oh, that would yeah. be great. I just have, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to wish her bad. I want to only wish her good things here. I have a good feeling about her for this race. Yeah, I she, really have a good feeling. And she runs with, I'll tell you one thing about Lizzie Lee as well. I mean, I've been going about it, but she go. will. See her there. Yep. She's up at the, see her there behind the She will leave everything on the course. Yeah, there we go. Brilliant. That is absolutely And we're at the Walkinstown roundabout yeah. here, lads. So this is coming up, this is about 16 Lovely. miles, 14, 15 miles. We've gone past 14. Yeah, yeah. We just passed 14 at the Super Value. So there's four women together, including Lizzie Lovely. Lee. That is, this is brilliant. A race. That is brilliant. Yeah. Now I just hope, I just hope, and I'm gonna say hope as in like I'm sure she's not. I knew I'm sure she knows exactly what she's doing. In other words, like a mid-race surge like that can can take a lot out of you. But I think it, it was only about fifty meters in it, and it was from yes. from um coming up the Crumlin Road. So she she's after getting fifty meters in, in about a mile. Yes, yes, so yeah. It, it, yeah. It's not, it's not, no, it's, it's certainly not, not nothing. No. It's not like she's really sprinted to the front. And she's done a smart thing. She's got on them. She's sitting yeah. in behind them. Yeah. But there was another, oh yeah, there's, sorry, there's three. So there's two Ethiopians, a Kenyan, and Lizzie Lee. And Lizzie Lee. Anyway, we have a proper race on our hands here, like, which is Fantastic. really exciting, really exciting. I mean, I was expecting this. As yeah, a you did. You race. did predict this. You did. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really. I know we're over halfway. I get more excited when we're over halfway. Yes. I always think we, you know, we've started seeing a bit of a move there and fantastic to see Lizzie. She's up for it. She's absolutely up for it. And as I said, I'm, I wasn't even. While she absolutely wants the national title. I kind of felt, looking at the standard of women in it, that she has the potential yes, for yes. getting a podium yes, finish yeah. here. Which would be brilliant, be brilliant. I'd love I know, to see I know. That. I think it's, I think it's on. I think it's on, and you know, a lot of a lot's going to happen over the next hour of racing. You know, absolutely. the men's race, the men's race will be over within the next 40 minutes, obviously. Yeah, less, less. Yeah. So, um, I think I do think that. Um, yeah, the next the next hour is going to be very exciting. Oh, wow. It's going to be very exciting yeah. to watch this, and it's great to get a camera on the women here now because look at Lizzie Lee. She is giving it socks, and you know what? She loves this. She loves the competition. Mile well, 15, 15 for the women. Yeah. There we go. I mean, the thing about it is, she she relishes this kind of competition. She does. And oh, looking for her water. That's okay. Okay. I was, okay. I, was wondering okay. About that. I was getting nervous when they start doing ha hand actions. Yeah. I'm like, what am I? What a woman, what a woman. And you think as well, like you say, gave birth to a second, I think it's two, 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 two daughters now, I think yeah. it is. Um, the one-year-old and a four-year-old. Oh, there's a medal now. Of course, Countex Markovic ah, is on this. Ah, exactly. You, you have a story about this, I'm sure. Yeah, this this is very is, so this year's event at Mars is a celebration of female runners, and the the medal has contact, excuse me, contest Constance Markovic, who is a key campaigner for the Irish women's voting rights. Yes. And that's on that, her... She is appearing on the finishers' medals. Interesting fact, since 1980, the number of female participants has grown from 70 to 70,000 this yeah, year. Amazing, yeah, 70, yeah, 000, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Manana Heron, fair play to you. Beautiful. And there is our leading Manana Heron in, in this Lizzie group here. Lee, Lizzie it sucks. Lee. Yeah, fantastic yeah. to see this. And I think if anybody, if anybody needs encouragement or inspiration, just look at Lizzie Lee. I mean, again, she came into the sport by accident. She was, uh, I think, working in America, and she took part in one of these kind of corporate triathlons, and then she ran a pretty quick 10K. And I think the story is she bumped into Amy McCockin or something and told Amy McCockin her time, and Amy was like, that's a pretty good time. You should do more of this, more of this running. And <laughs> you should she, think of taking she, up this running. She's like, okay, I'll give it a go. And then um, and then, uh, and then, basically what happened there was that she, uh, she, she, I think she ran her first marathon in Dublin in 2006, more yeah. for the fun. And, yeah. um, you know, it all, it all, it all took off from there. So, a very exciting race. We're, we're shortly going to be handing over to our co-commentators here, the great Phelan Kelly and Finchner Finch Riley, who are going to, who are going to continue this very exciting race. It's absolutely thrilling race. I'm looking very much looking forward to the next hour. See how it unfolds. Uh, we'll be sitting, we'll be sitting here at the company box watching, watching closely because this is. Just as we say this, look, to, look who sneaks to the front of the women's race. It's Lizzie Lee. Now she has looks like two, there's two Irish guys kind of in front of her. I don't they're, know whether they're they were there. By, um, whether they were there by design or not, and men's race, we still have an American set, Totten. So, really exciting. We've got two 
quite gripping races on our hands here. Uh, uh, really excited about a, that a one. A men's race that we have, the Amer we have an American trying to break the African dominance, and in the women's race, we have an Irish woman trying to break the African dominance. So um, the old Irish-American connections are flying high here today, but uh, fair play to Seth Totten. He's giving it, he's giving it a real go here. He's strung out the field. That's the first time we've seen him actually strung out. Like they've actually, like they've actually made a. That is the first. You're dead right. It's the first time we're not grouped. Yes. Yeah. Out. Like yeah. I, I we're always, starting. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's the like, accordion. It's like or beads on the string. Beads <laughs> on the string. I prefer my accordion. <laughs> Well, the accordion is certainly more musical air. It is, isn't it? And as we approach Darren Year, where they always have a big band. But think about the oh, marathon winner. Oh, here we go. Here just, we go. Just in time. What a, what a time nice moment. What a nice moment to pass over. He's going to pass down here in front of us. This is John Boy Smith, our first wheelchair finisher in a quite brilliant time of 1.35.46. And of course, they would have... No, this is, they think that is the official no, time. It is. Which would explain why. Um, oh, we why were looking we were at the minutes. wrong yeah. one. So yeah, this is the wheelchair this is the time. Wheelchair time we were looking at. Which would explain why. So John why Boy I'm Smith, English athlete, paraplegic, ranked second overall in the UK, second in the Commonwealth Nations, fourth in Europe, and 19th in the world. And here he is, number one in Ireland, 1:36.13 on Brilliant. the clock there to win that. Anyway, here we go. I think we're going to queue up here and listen to a few more people out on the course to see how they're getting on out there. Okay, perfect. Over to you. So Bekele there leads the group out. Uh, they're definitely beginning to, to spread out here. You can definitely move on here as, as the guys come into the latter part of this SSE Electricity Dublin City Marathon. So it's going to be who is the strongest now over this last half hour or so? Well, the move is definitely on, Phil, at this stage. Yeah, they're well stretched now, and you can see it's actually not that cold. Now you can see them there in their T-shirts, but um, yeah, they're well stretched out now, and we'll take a look back on the uh, national race as well now shortly. So 19 miles, seven to go. Yeah, so they say this is where the race really starts at 20 miles. Everybody can generally get to around 20 miles hard or get into that position. But we've seen some of the other runners like Freddie Carrens took. I don't think he was in great shape this year. He was giving it a test. And there is back to the women's race. That's Declan Power, who was mentioned there in the Clonale Fest, the famous Clonale Fest. They operate at a Morton Stadium. And uh, Finton, that's where you operate for the Morton Games, the track meet. So he's yeah. there in the black vest with the amber stripe, and we can see that was four athletes. So Lizzie Lee is having a good race there. But again, what are we looking for signs of? We're looking for the signs of the, the rhythm of the feet. They're all looking a little bit heavier there now, and any signs of distress in the face. Obviously, the shades on Lizzie Lee will kind of mask a little bit of that pain, but she, she is looking a little bit labored at this point, but neither of the other three look too fantastic no starting to look around them and i don't know why you'd be looking around you when you have the three other main competitors right beside you so that's obviously the first sign of tiredness but deck power looks to be doing the pacemaking for these uh leaders in the women's race yeah so we're back to the mid pack here so we're just looking there mick Classy went through 30k in, in 136 uh freddie sitox just ahead of him in 135 so uh, Freddie seems to be uh, the first Rohini man and the first Irish man then in behind him is Mick Classy at the minute. Mick, Gary O'Hanlon's just gone through 30k in, in 137. So they're on 217 pace or 216 pace at this stage. So which would be massive PB for Gary. We know we know Mick Classy has a 214.55. Uh, I spoke with Mick about six weeks ago and you know he does believe that he, he can run a 212 marathon. Uh, it doesn't look as though that'll happen today, but, you know, he is one of our best competitors over the last number of years, and, and it'd be great to see him uh, do himself justice here today. Yeah, I think as Susan Walsh was uh, alluding to earlier on air, that uh, I think he's really here to try and bag a national title. He has cross-country and road titles, so his main thing now is to try and pick up this national title. There's a lot of work to do, obviously, Freddie Satuk, but I expect Freddie Satuk uh, to... Uh, to metaphorically die anyway, not physically die here today on the road to Dublin, but I, I think he's going to go backwards. He hasn't shown great form. I think he ran 2.42 in Longford, and there has been a lot of time since then, but, but Gary ran 2.20. He's yes. going to go backwards. 
Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's important. Don't forget, whoever wins this, and if they can get the uh, world qualifying standard, they're, they're on the ticket to the World Championships next year. So there's a lot of stake for these Irish boys here today. Uh, we have most of our, our leading athletes trying to get that. And if Mick Clahasy can win today and get the qualifying time, he can just concentrate then on the World Championships. Yeah, and mile 17 here saw the leading ladies again. Lizzie Lee, she is here as well for her glory. She won her first ever Dublin mini marathon here on the, the streets of Dublin, funnily enough. And uh, she is looking to try and bag that title now. Could history be made? Could she be the overall winner, which would be fantastic? Obviously, the last Irish winner was Maria McCambridge, but there was no international field. And so obviously, this is going to strike a deeper chord if she can manage to beat this uh, African triumvirate. As you can see, a number of the club vests. So the, I think that's St. Finbar's AC, correct me if I'm wrong. And you can log in on the uh, YouTube channel, get your comments in, get your questions in. And we're looking at, going to look at all the club athletes as well. And you can see in the green and white trimming there was Clonmel AC as we go back to the men. And, of course, get your hashtags in. Hashtag I can, I will. And, of course, if you haven't seen who's sponsoring it, it is SSE Electricity, wonderful sponsors of the Dublin Marathon for the last number of years. And they are spread out, but some of them are bunching up. They're just testing each other out, up in, up in the rhythms, up and down a little bit. And you can see Totten there from the USA, the tall figure, just a little bit back off the pack. And I think he's coached by Andrew Castor, Dina Castor's husband. She's one of the best American distance runners of all time, originally hailing from South Africa. I think our lead men there at the moment are David Manja, Joel Kiptu, Haile Gameda, Asifa Bakila. Tessie yeah, and yeah. then Seth Totten Totten at the there. back of that group, and Rotich and Yadidi seem to be there as well. These guys are all running just over five minute mile pace, so it just puts it in perspective how fast these guys go. Yeah, so, so yeah. five minute mile pace again. We're uh, old school, aren't we, Fintan, in that we're mileage men, but uh, in terms no of apologies kilometers, for it, Phil, make yeah, no apologies. I think it's around three minutes a kilometre, roughly, so, so five minute miles, 75 seconds a lap, 230 through 800. And uh, you're talking 37, so uh, so around 3:07 a k actually. I think my maths is right. Actually, 3:04. Yeah, not too bad. Actually, <laughs> let you off. What's half 75? It's like Count Dracula on the. Be 37.50, wouldn't it? Sesame Street. But anyway, look at them there. They're shaking out the arms. They're. I think they're really gearing themselves up. They're going to probably run a hard last couple of miles. And as Ian O'Riordan said earlier, these guys are not here for times. They're here the cash money they're looking to bank some coin get a few cows and sheep and goats or whatever else for their shamba as they say in kenya that's a bit of land in swahili as we go back to the women's race here you yeah, can see it looks like we're down to three women is it yes yeah, some of them are hidden in behind i think there's four still there yeah one of them still sitting there and deck power we've seen him run 600s and 800s at the nia live indoors and here he is with the 42k today and he seems to be doing a great job of Happy to lead that pack out. The ladies happy to sit in behind. And then a few others looking to get the glory of being on TV with the leading ladies. Here's a man heavily clad there, isn't he, in his uh, yellow jacket and a long tights hat. He's uh, certainly not going to be cold. Um, I remember your, your homeostasis, your body core temperature is around 37 degrees. And it is pretty much perfect conditions for them, really, particularly for the Irish runners out there. Um, you know, when you're thinking about conditions, we were told it was going to be really cold, really bad. We were all wrapped up even on the side of it to sit on the side. And it's actually not that cold. And, you know, it's the heat that really does the damage. If, it's, if it gets too hot, you're in a lot of trouble over a 42 kilometer. Yeah, race. it's a big decision when you're starting out this morning as to uh, how much do I put on and when do I take it off and where do I actually throw it off. So, you know, I'd say a lot of them were happy enough to just be able to start the race in the singlets. But it's Jeff Chichir who is with that leading ladies group. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a nice clear screen yeah. that we can call Lizzie the names of the bibs. And then Dubisu. So there's the, that's the three of them. And it's definitely... We've one more hidden. Oh, we have one hidden in behind there. Playing so. possum, if you will. So, yeah, they're coming along nicely. We've got the Clan Mel AC. They, the Autumn Open was in Abbottstown there the other week. You were on the live MC duties there in Clanmel. Had three runners in the top six, and Sean Tobin, Kevin Monsell, Willie Monsell. So they can have a little look here. Yeah. These, these guys, as you say, some of them, they're in nearly their perfect rhythm, which works for the 
for Glaze, but you can see some of the number 579 there. Probably not as elegant as, as the elite women, but uh, he is able to... These guys are diesel engines. They can just grind this pace at all day. Some of them look uncomfortable, but they can just keep this uncomfortable pace up for the majority of it. Yeah, I've never had the satisfaction of doing a marathon. I, I, I remember you doing one a few years ago, Phelan. Uh, I think you were going to jog around, but went around in, what, 2.30-something? Two, two yeah, 2.36, yeah. I, I was basically trying to do what these lads are doing. I was uh, pacing Linda Byrne, or had the intentions of it, in 2011 to help her uh, get on the ticket for London for the Olympics. And I did do it for a little while, but I, I, I'd eaten a little bit too much. I had stomach problems, so a little bit too much fibre. Right? At least three stops around the 26-mile course. And a lot of the main mid-packers and runners, they will be taking pit stops, and there's portaloos around the course. And uh, some of them who didn't prepare as well as I did, or we'd equally not so good preparation, if you will, and we were, uh, they'll be taking their pit stops, because some of these guys, they're going to be four, five, six hours, so they're going to be taking on board gels and foods, and they've had their porridge or whatever, and yeah. the stomach does move around a lot. Yeah, the, the leaders probably won't take anything more on board at this stage, they're done and dusted. So, so it's good to get plenty of coverage now of the women's race as well, because the deck power just decides he's done enough He's moved on. Lizzie Lee says thanks to him. So he, she seems to be pretty comfortable here. Probably running within herself at the 2.35 pace. But it's Jeff Chircher. Still looks pretty comfortable herself. Yeah, that was just Bletchfeld came through there and won 50.58. And, you know, Patrick Monaghan came through in second place, running or going out 3.46 kilometre pace. So, you know, or 3.46 mile pace. These boys absolutely flying. So eight runners still in contention here in this main men's race. You can see Totten at the back, and uh, there was a famous line in the 2006 Commonwealth Games. Craig Mottram was in the, in the thick of it there in Melbourne, the hometown favourite, and, and they said he was in an African sandwich. Well, Totten isn't quite in the sandwich, but he, he's, on, he's on the edge of the spread there. And uh, yeah, so we see uh, Rotich and Kip to the two leaders. Uh, it's good to see Totten get himself back onto, onto that group, so whether the pace has slowed down or whether he has got another lease of life and, and, and back in the hunt. But it looks as though, you know, coming into the last few miles, we're going to have a real race on here. There's nobody's taking it on. We still have four women right in contention. So I think we might be going to it few Vox Pops now maybe shortly but you can see as we're still live on these screens look at this man the casual approach is a big yellow jacket he's he's on 235 pace so it's not bad in the tights all oh, the leggings or the jeggings and the and the hat so we're gonna take a little break so back so to coming up to we're jumping in on each other's cues Finton so uh, that was Frank Greeley doing the Vox Pops there, not that you heard him. And uh, yeah, you saw Dave Brady there was one of the guys in the green and white vest. He's had a poor return of Martins this year. I think he's only done around 85. He was hoping to do more, but the, uh, the weather wasn't so great. So he's behind schedule a little bit as one of the African runners is off the back. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of the other, the mid-pack stories there. The runner support page was also mentioned there. They're a big face group page. And, they have a lot of the runners there, so we can say we're coming at the business end pretty much. Yeah, just over 20 minutes to go, so looks like we're probably on course for a 2.12, 2.13, and they're just up to 1.50 now, and still looks like seven athletes there, and it's Kip to and Manj and Bekele and Seth Totten right in behind them. Yeah, so you're wondering about the pace. We, It's always a good indicator as we get this nice... Uh, overlay screen here courtesy of timing ireland yeah so coming up to 22 miles in round belfield down the still organ dual carriageway there and then we can see our leading ladies coming to around 19 miles we've got a man with a bat belt here from clan mel ac he's got a couple of gels and the drinks and again lizzie lee is actually again look at the cadence of the feet she actually looks like she's popping off the ground a little bit more like you're always going to go through a couple of bad patches uh, mentally and physically in a marathon like 26 miles you're, you're on the road for over two hours like even any runners who mid-pack runners if you're doing 10 miles and things like that you know it's a it's a pretty long 
that's a pretty long run in itself. So you're always going to go through little patches and you get a bit more rhythm and bounce. And then they will get to a point as well where physically they probably feel fine and can push, but then they might have a muscular injury. You might have tight calves or quads and it might be just a pull on the hamstring. So there's a lot of different things that can happen. And now some of them are messing up their drinks exchange out of Jeff Cheercher and the, the other Africans might help them out. But there is always a rivalry. Yeah. Although they're the two Ethiopians, so they'll work together. But the Kenyans and Ethiopians generally always have a rivalry there. But Lizzie Lee, she's hanging tough. The longer she can stay here, the better the better it'll get for her. And these these are the quiet sections of the course here. I remember when I ran this before, you know, you're not going to have a little, too much support here. But as we saw there, once they come back out, back by RTE and, and down past the shopping centre there at North Grove. And again, here's back to the mid pack. You can see a lot more support here. They'll get another, they'll get another pick up and they're into town then and that's Don Shaven. Here's a fella, Paul, with his uh, pearl there, a bit of a Halloween outfit. Yeah, absolutely. So we saw the women went through in 1 minute 50, 50 through 30k, the four of them. And getting back to the, the Irish based athletes, um, all pretty, pretty close. It's still Freddie. It's about 100 metres, it looks like, over Mick Clahasy and uh, Freddie running at around 5.08 uh, mile pace. Mick Clahasy's on 5.10 mile pace. But as we saw last year, and he came right through the field, we have Gary O'Hanlon, 44 years old last August. He's running a 5.13 pace, so he's not too far off the leaders and the Irish context. And Sergio Chiabanu then also having a good run here. He's at 5.15 mile pace. It's and we are now down to one, two, three, four, looking like five at least. Totten has gone back off again. And um, yeah, so it's Kiptu, Tola, Manja, Michele and Rotich. So it looks to be these five and it looks like Rotich could be beginning to drop off that pack there as well. We just try and find out who that. So it looks as though the pace is either picked up or the others are beginning to really feel this oh, last few miles. So still. They're all here. So just over two minutes there, two hours for Marathon athlete or coming through in the wheelchair. Yeah, so we were back with the lead women and still much as it were, and we're back to the men, of course. And uh, now they're coming out in front of the the front of UCD where there used to be a track but thankfully there will be a new track reinstated there and it's due to be there by 2020. Yeah, good news we heard there. It seemed to have been a very progressive meeting there earlier in the week. So it'll be great to have a track there again. For me, psychologically, these guys, they're, they're basically on the straight road back into Dublin now. They've gotten over the hardest part of the race for me. They've gone over the back of UCD in Milltown there and now, really, you can get into your running here what, one, two, three, four, five. These guys are going to have to pick it up a little bit. They still have a lot more to give. You can see the runner in the blue vest, the black shorts. He, he's looking pretty Chip good. Too, yeah, he looks very, very comfortable there. But not too many of them seem to be struggling there. Is this going to be some race? Yeah, no, they're not really struggling because they haven't really pushed the pace too hard. No. They're, they're after that cash prize. But again, this is type of goes back to like a bike race back to like the Tour de France they're gonna now have to time it like three miles to go 15 minutes of running uh, and you know it'd be interesting to see what they could cover the last mile or so on because they can really get under five minutes a mile now yeah well nice little breather like it looks as though they're coming nicely downhill there yeah so they've gone over that UCD flyover now I think That's great, yeah but it's Manja in the green Rotich in the blue, and then Bekele in the other green singlet there. So. Looks to be working the hardest of the five of them from what I can see there, Phelan. Yeah, up onto the fly over now in UCD. But again, if you're up the top again, are they false moves as well? You kind of just give yourself a little bit of a burst and a boost, push the pace up the front and see can you get into a nicer rhythm. But Manja in the green, as you were saying, is now trying to push the pace, trying to break them. And into that last 15 minutes of running, you know you can do it. And here we're back with the lead women again. They're coming up the back end here. This is some of the, some of the tougher ends of the course for the ladies. 
and you can see in the green and white there, that's Dermot Gorman from Rahini Shamrock. He's hanging in there with them, and there's battles within the battles. You can see the Newbridge rest there now leading the women. They kind of, some of them are, look, they know they're going to be on the screen as well. There is that slight ego trip, but also some of them has pr have the pride. As you can see, Lizzie Lee now is getting dropped a little bit. She was doing well to yeah. hang in with them. Yeah, so it's all beginning to happen there. There's nothing wrong with running a 235 marathon, whether you're a man. Phelan, I'd take that any day. So swarms of athletes coming through here, all looking with their own PBs in store, just some of them doing it for the first time ever. A lot of them, as we've seen, have done many a marathon since 1980. And it just gets bigger and bigger. And now there looks to be a move on here, Phelan. Yeah, they're pushing on nicely. So some of the runners, as you were saying, they've done the 39 marathons. That they're going back down off the UCD flyover, and now, even though I preempted it earlier, the real racing has really gone now because it's yeah. flat road all the way in. Um, so I'm just hearing on the course that Mick Clahasy is about a minute ahead of Gary O'Hanlon, and that Mick seems to be slowing. So as we've seen before, Gary, he clawed them in last year, but is it just too late, or can Mick hold on? We know the competitor that Mick Clahasy is. So we could see those two very close to each other as they come in, the Rahini Shamrock man and the Clonliffe Harriers man. There's no... There's no can uh, you see where Freddie Satuk is? is he yeah, still well, Freddie still seems to be ahead of them from what I can hear and see. I'm being told he's still maybe not too far ahead, but he is ahead at the minute. But he will not win the National Martin title this year. We can confirm pre- <laughs> and post-race that he won't be. Obviously, last year, uh, there was a little bit of a technicality there which was all sorted and Gary got his title but yeah it's going to be blood sweat and guts even Gary when he came across the line he had a you know sometimes it's not a pretty sight at the end of the end of a marathon but it is 26.2 miles he had the, the proverbial fried egg in his face with the the saliva covered all over but you'll do whatever it takes to get to get the W and we're now down to the three Manja, Bikila yeah Rotich I think is it last year's winner is it then so, the so it's kip two i think maybe there yeah trio away and now on your right of the screen now that is rte studios montrose yeah so they'll come down to merion and swing left and then it's the long straight into the finish they're actually trialing you at the moment Vincent, so no pressure as they go by montrose here in rte and you can see the press bus there as well i'm sure greg allen from rte radio is, is, might be in that one keeping an eye on proceedings as well. So we're really into the business end of it. It's down to three athletes, that's for sure. It's down to those three again. They won't be doing anything silly. Some of the slow runners, down around this area when I was running as well in 2011, I think it was, down at the end there, there's kids outside the Nutgrove Shopping Centre and I took a few Harry Bow sweets and you think some of these things are nice, but when you're running, you can see the different side of the sweets. It frothed up the mouth. I had to spit them out, <laughs> get a bit of water. And so any little bits and pieces. So it's Manja there in the green. And, and then Kip 2 in the blue. But basically, in that essence, anything can happen. As you see, they're going up and down these bumps. A little misstep can miscue the stomach, and you can just be a little bit broken out of your rhythm. You're getting a little bit tired. Any thing small that can go wrong will affect you coming into this this closing. Yeah, so out of those five or six, I actually thought that Bekele was the one struggling, but he's he is with that leading group, and Lizzie Lee's back with the leaders. So <laughs> we still... Number 427, we'll try and get our YouTube stream up as well, uh, and we get a few comments in. But uh, what about Mr. Casual, number 427? I think, is it a Waterford best, or maybe it's one of the foreign runners? But Dermot Gorman is on the left from Mahini Shamra in the green and white, and we have our quartet of ladies and one of our men who's gone out a little bit harder you're now going to see as Lizzie Lee's dad Gary Lee likes to call it you're about to be chicked which uh, is never good for the ego as a man but anyway yeah well it looks as though Lizzie Lee's going to take the Irish title for sure unless something mad happens in the next half hour or so for her because we're just well, about just under two hours three minutes at the minute and the crowd really building the whole way along here outside Hollis Street Hospital and all the way up towards what used to be Jury's Hotel. And the athletes will be swinging left very shortly for that long, long run in that last couple of miles. And 
here they are turning. So now they have the long straight. Manja just takes a little look over his shoulder. He'll see it's down to three, Kip two and Bekele. Who's your money on here, Phelan? Uh, Kip two at the moment. Yeah, I think so too. He looks very, very strong here in the blue singlet. But seeing as you've gone for him, I'll have to go for somebody else. So I'll you have a one in three chance. <laughs> I'll, put my, I'll, I'll, I'll put my hat on uh, Bekele here in, in the back. He's never been at the front. He sat with these guys. They've, they've opened up probably 100 metres over the rest of the field in that last mile or so. Yeah, so we have a couple of the messages coming in. Sean Daly, keep it going, boys. Colin Morgan, good luck. Mary Morgan from Boston and you can you will Lisa Simpson from Acorn. So we've got clubs all the way from Acorn, Sound of Water, Sound of Warriors. Stephen Redmond, just very positive comments. This clown has too much to say. We'll keep talking. But Lizzie Lee has a great following here. Come on, Lizzie. Go, Lizzie. And Lizzie and uh, Caroline Magali is also in it. So you can see here, Lizzie Lee is a very popular runner. And we can see her there with those lead female runners, the three, the three Africans. The Five miles to go for them. So half an hour from the finish. So it looks as though they're going to be bang on the 2.35 in the women's race. Yeah, so she's still got a good bit to go. Again, she really wants to count down the miles. Want you, again, you want to be inside that last 15 minutes of running because she is tough, Lizzie. So the closer she can get to the finish, the more she'll hang on. Two of them, and we're back to the trio here again, Fenton. Yeah, so these are going to be spread across the road here as they come into the last mile and a half or so of this race. So a lot at stake for these boys in this SSE, Air Tristy Dublin City Marathon. And you'll just have a look there. I see Maura Coppinger's here is saying, go Katrina Jennings, second Irish lady. And we, we'll try and figure out who the third Irish lady is. Some of them who are in contention in the preview were Zola Flynn from Sligo and Jane Ann Meehan from Galway, uh, Betty Gilles, Bon Courage, Alex Yannick, Alban Titi, A Helene, Christelle, Severine, Latim, HD, Coureur du Nord de la France. So North France well represented here and it is the international race and the most friendliest marathon in Europe by all accounts. Very impressed with your pronunciations there. Trying to remember the leaving cert French. But a great bunch. Obviously did pass and failed, did you? Yeah, I did pass. Do we have another female runner in the bunch here who's come yeah. out of power now there's five of them in there so we can see in the green singlet there we just try and see is who that is but she'll obviously have the momentum it looks like natasha cochram from england so it'll be a 249 so i know this is must where be incorrect here well she's up there and this is where she came out of nowhere, and we have had it before, and let's hope not. Uh, I hope I'm just making a, a gross error, but I, I hope there hasn't been a cut in the course, and they have somehow joined with those, so you can get your comments in there if you have uh, So past the embassies, past the multi-million euro houses, which went past the Intercontinental Hotel now, and then they'll make their way up this home straight. So that's the last drinks on board here now. So it looks as though it's starting to move again. They're passing the RDS here now, Finton, which is where they did the expo and all the runners were getting all their numbers and any freebies or any bits of goodies on Friday and Saturday for the expo. And we're back to the lead women again. And uh, some of the comments just will go through. Come on, Daniel and Keith from Lisa Newman, Daniel's Voyage, Tracy Moore, go on, Jane and Meehan. Um, yeah, Best of luck to Balan Totus, and there's Ashton Roach, there's Poole, and a bit of praise here too, and Sligo Athletic Club runners who are running in memory of Joe Davey, who should be with you all today, but he's watching over you. So there's a lot of stories within the story, and uh, good, with some people are uh, keeping up to speed. Jane Ann Meehan is currently third Irish lady, and Zola Flint is fourth, so thanks to Elaine Cole. Yeah, so that, that is Natasha Cochran, and she's... Went through an average pace of six or eight miles for the first 10k and then upped it to six minute miles and now to 550s at 30k. So she has definitely come through the field here and she's on the course for an absolutely massive PB. We've seen supposedly 249 is her PB and she's a 35.12 for a 10k, which she did in Cardiff earlier this year. But this is 
Yeah, 35-12. I mean, it is remarkable. Running, how, how do you run 35-12 and all of a sudden get all these PBs in? We'll try and get an age profile. But anyway, if, if that's the case, it's the story of the day and it's some come through that she's still there and she's come from a ways back and pace perfectly. So we'll try and get the splits, if we can, there, Fintan, of some of those. The lead runners have the elite ladies slow down considerably. Yeah, so Kepchircher is still there. Lizzie Lee is still there. Now we've seen Cochrane has joined that group. And we'll also... Debiso is also there. So we have our leading African triumvirate as expected. Lizzie Lee is still running a blinder and she's got the Lee Vale headband on there. And that's nearly a, a hat tip to her famous coach, Donny Walsh, who all, also, when he was running, he used to wear a Lee Vale headband. So I'd say that's part of it. And he was a famous marathoner. So we're well into the last mile in this men's race here. We're going to see them, I'd say. You'll see people looking down will start to see figures appearing in the distance. And it's Kip 2 has definitely gone to the front from Manja. And then Bekele sitting in behind. He, no intention of going to the front at any stage in this race. But will he be at the front at the 42k? So who did you say your money was on? Bekele is I'm going Bekele here, yeah. <laughs> It's going to be an exciting finish anyway. Who will make their move with kind of 800 metres to go? And will we have a battle royale of the trio right into the finish? And Dave Dempsey is on the uh, roadside MC here for the crowd. So it's going to be an exciting finish here for the 2018 SSC Electricity Dublin Marathon in the men's race. So they're starting to try and get their positions here. And that's Manja on the left of the screen from Kip 2 in the middle. And then over on the right hand side with Bekele. Keep flying those messages in on the YouTube and also if you have our contact phone numbers <laughs> to give us some tips, we'll be grateful for those. So look at this, there's a bit of possum here, you're going from side to side, it really is like that classic bike race where you're just trying to pick a part of the road. Uh, Kip, Kip 2 has had a little look back there, is, is his day done? Well he's now knows anyway, the boys can settle right, we have cash each, one, two, three. Now, in which order are we going to get yeah, that? Yeah, well, it looks it's down to Manja and Bekele maybe at this stage, but it's hard to see with from cross. There's Cochran to the front from Chep Chirchir and Lizzie Lee. Lizzie does look pretty comfortable all the same, Phelan. Yeah, she has still a good rhythm, but Cochran is... Yeah, it looks very, very easy. Yeah, she looks good. She's come from a ways back. And... Uh, yeah, it's still exciting. Anyway, the, the, the closer it gets to the finish, the better. But again, who has the who has the finish? Who has the strength? So here we're coming into the business end of it now, and it is down to these two athletes. It's Manja and Bekele. So the singlet in the lead from Bekele in the T-shirt. So my man has gone. Looks <laughs> like I don't, unless he's going to make a magic comeback. I don't think so. It could be like the jewel and the sun, Dick Beardsley. Yeah, so it's down to the business end between these two. Oh, Manja, Bekele takes a little look over him, his shoulder to the, just lets him know that I'm right here. Don't you worry, I've been here for the last 42k. So we're at 2.11. We want to see them very, very shortly here. Still another little bit to go. I ran in 2016 as well, and it's a nicer finish here. Uh, just outside Hall Street Hospital. Bekele's made his move. Your man. Bekele's gone for it, yeah. Jeez, I know, I know my stuff. On Marion Square North. Who needs to run a marathon? Oh, look, at your, these look, look, look at your kip two there. Will he, will he make third, will he? Look at your kip two. <laughs> and it looks as though there's a bit of a move in the women's race as well. But here they come into this home straight. You'll see them down in front of you here. Oh, yeah. Spectators take a look to their left and see that there is a bit of a race. It's not over yet. Bekele in the middle of the road. And Bekele Manja. has the bounce, doesn't he? Yeah, Manja near the barriers. But he, did, he looks very comfortable here, actually. He's going to take this. He'll probably not be inside 2.13, but he's not going to be too far off it. So 2.12.30 now on the clock. Yeah, he's another... So, down past bit the, the new passport office. And look at him. Full of bounce. Come into the finish, 
So Asefa Bekele from Ethiopia looks to be the 2018 SSE Electricity Dublin City Marathon Champion. He just hasn't come into view to us yet, but he will be now, Fintan. So we're, we're sitting in the porter cabin here, but he's out on the roadside here on Marion Square North, and it's Asefa Bekele who's going to take the title for 2018. Dave Dempsey is ringing him in on the roadside. 2.13.12 on the clock so and counting. Joel Kiptu then in second place from Kenya, so it's Ethiopia 1, Kenya 2. So he crosses the line, he's going to be under 2.13.30, he's about 2.13.24. Brilliant running a set of Bekele, and here now is Manja in second, as I've just gone off the screen. So David Manja, the South African athlete. A couple of kisses there for the lads. So he is happy to take that 2018 SSE Electricity Dublin City Marathon. 2.13.41 on official there for Kip2 in third. So we've got these Project Africa. So we've got a couple of these lads. They set up their little bits and bobs as charities. Inverted commas over in Africa. And they help out these runners. And here is Totten now. We've seen him throughout the race. Great run from the from the US of A. And we've got Rotich last year's winner now coming in through fifth place. So these guys, he's in fourth rather so going to see a constant stream, Totten, it'll be a good run for Totten here, he'll be happy with that, he, he put it up to them for probably 35k. Yeah, and he's well under 2.15, so good run here in Dublin, you know, we don't see too many, although Sokolov is on 2.09, but it's rare we've seen it lately a white man run under 215 so some nice running by top and i think he's pretty happy with that that's a good day's work and he's uh, fairly goosed as well there's, there's not another ounce of energy in that man's body there the officials try and take you through the finish but when your legs won't go it's not easy to go any further yeah, he's in trouble so yeah unfortunately we don't have a clock the kilometre on the screen, but we work with that. And, and here's uh, Mick Clossy. The Rahini Shamrock man is going to be a good run for Mick Clossy here. He's going to be outside his PB, but it looks as though he's going to be under 216. He's a legend. There is nobody like this man. He is such a popular athlete. He runs from 5,000 metres. He's only getting warmed up when he runs 5,000. Come on, Mick. And he's perking up here. He's got the Insomnia logo on his vest as well, so they'll be happy with that. Mick Clausey is now going to win his first ever national marathon title. And he is coming through nicely. He was here the pre-race favourite. He is such a popular figure in Irish athletics. He runs around the country on all of the road races. He's such a popular Rahini Shamrock athlete. Can he get under 216? On, Mick, you can do it. Looks like he'll get under it just about, but it'll be tight. Yeah, it's been a good run for Mick. And Josh Griffiths just coming in behind him. He'll get in under the 216, or will he? Yes, he will. He's just on a 215.58, it looks. He'll be happy with that. That's a really fast national marathon winning time as well, so excellent running there. Josh Griffiths then just in behind, and we should see a stream of athletes now start to come. We're going to see a lot of the Irish shoot off then. That's one of the trend, Ken. You can see Gary O'Hanlon just behind those duo. He's second in this national marathon race, so excellent running. Yeah, and he's, he's on going for to be a huge on a PB. massive PB. He's, just, he's a 2.18.50, I think it is, Phil. Yeah, 2.18.53, and, and, and he might get under 2.17, so he's on for a huge PB. Can he so do it? Shoot off finishes from Tala. Tala absolutely goosed as he comes across the line here. Oh, Hanlon, 44 years of age. He's going to be just outside the 217, unfortunately, but it's brilliant running. So he's last year's marathon champion. Here he comes, the upright figure at Gary O'Hanlon. He's looking at the clock here. He's probably run seven or eight marathons already this year. What a legend. The Dundalk man runs for Rahini, or for Clonliffe Harriers. He's just over 217, but it's going to be like a 90-second or more personal best for Gary O'Hanlon. It's a huge run. And looks like Sergio Jaban is just going to hold on for third here from Clonliffe Harriers. He's wearing the best, so big so team Clonliffe battle two and three. Mark Kerwin from Rahini Shamrock. A big run from Mark Kerwin here. So we've two Rahini Shamrock men in. Massive run and a big PB is going to be for Mark Kerwin too. If he can just hold that together, he's going to get under 218. It'll be his first time under 218. So huge running. One and four for Rahini Shamrock. Two and three for Clonliffe Harriers. It's going to be some race to the team title here. That's a great run, 217.37 for Mark Heron. He will be seriously happy with that. 
Oh, he'll be very happy again now. That's the battle for the team title. Really up for grabs. Three to score. We've got two from Clan Lefin, two from Rahini. We had on that one. And we have another so of our leads coming in. Alexeyev. Alexeyev, yeah, through. So we're going to be waiting to see where Dave Flynn comes in now. He was with the guys well into this race, but he obviously struggled in the latter part. We've seen him run good half marathons this year, but stepping up to the full marathon is a different ball game altogether. Got some serious running. Gary O'Hanlon is 44 years of age. He's won the Cork Marathon, the Longford Marathon. He was first master in the Berlin Marathon. And he's second in the national marathon here, and he's run a massive PB as Gameda comes in as well. Yeah, if you just look at his times over the last 10 years, where he probably has a 2.25 for his first, first marathon, and he's brought it down now to 2.17 low. Yeah, he's just phenomenal stuff. He did his first marathon with me back in 2011. We decided we'd do it together for a bit of a laugh, but obviously he's gone on to bigger so and better things. But my feed shows McClossey, their SSE Electricity Dublin City Marathon champion, and now. To be so looks to be in the lead in the women's race. Yes, yeah, well stretched out now. It was a matter of time before that was stretched out again. I'd say they had uh, slowed down a bit, that they, that they had all juxtaposed back together, especially with uh, Cochrane back in there. You can see Lizzie Lee is just a little bit further down the road there. So I'm arrested to be so from Ethiopia. And we have our other Ethiopian just a little behind, what, 10 metres or so, and then Lizzie Lee's probably another 100 metres further down the road, and there, somebody giving them a wave there, looking to give them a drink. So Natasha Cochran. And David Flynn is coming into the finish line, and David Mansfield now, he's winning the European Police uh, Martin Championship, which is also taking part in conjunction with this race, with Owen Callan a little bit behind him. David so Flynn making David a good Flynn debut. Across, yeah, in sub 220, 219.50 it looks like. But here he is a happy man. This is going to be a good run. Just over 220 for David Mansfield. He's got the Irish CX Plus singlet on him there. And uh, the, the crowd are probably wondering what he's celebrating because it obviously isn't that well publicised. But he is winning the European Police Martin Championships. It's a great run. And Owen Callahan from Star to Sea is having a great run there in the Illuminous yellow T-shirt as well. And he is under 221. That'll be a course PB anyway for Dublin for Owen Callahan, maybe even an official PB, so absolutely, yeah. 220, 30, he does a lot of training with, and look at that, the fist pump there, he is delighted, that is a PB. Yeah. 220, 27. He ran under 220 in the Manchester Marathon a couple of years ago, but it was a short course, it wasn't measured, actually, unfortunately, which did him out of a sub 220, but he'll be delighted with that, 220, 30, so we've got an East Cork runner coming in nicely now. So I'd say that finish must seem an eternity away, even if you're only 100 or 200 metres away. You see the great Pat Hooper there. He'll be well happy. But he has a marathon, national marathon title here today. I saw him down in Navin yesterday at the Leinster Juvenile and Novice Championships. He took over commentary for the, the Novice Championships from me yesterday. So to be so is stretching out her lead now so they have to go over these humps and bumps the road bumps here uh, by st vincent's hospital there as well so no sign of natasha cockram now so very unusual that she would have been with the leaders for such a brief period so paul o'neill getting a mention here savage running by the irish guys and then somebody comes in and the girls go lizzie lee but maria de Biso. Marisa Debiso from Ethiopia looks to be on course to take the SSC Air Trusty Dublin City Marathon Women's title. Now we have the famous French colours there. Probably in the European Police Marathon Championships as well, yeah. isn't he, really? So there's a lot going on there, and uh, yeah, Debiso is looking pretty good here now. She takes her left turn. There's Tomas Fitzpatrick in the Tala colours, red and yellow. Great competitor over the years. He's going pretty well, 222. He generally struggles over the marathon distance. He can get to around 20 miles, but this is a good run from. He's in his mid 30s now. He's a great club man, like at uh, all of the national leagues. He's always there, 
And he's actually, you can see he's pleased with that one, yeah. 2.22.35. And the Martin standard has really increased hugely, as we can see Frank Greeley there in the background, the former editor of the Irish Runner, with the winner. And there's Greg Allen from RT, and you can see Cleena Foley in the background, Foley and Duffy, all the journals and the hacks. But that's Greg Allen holding the RT uh, mic there. As we're back to the Biso and the lead women. She looks to be well, well clear in this women's race. So we should see her probably just over two miles to go for the women. Probably still on course for the 2.35. See, well done, Davey, on Clonmel. So keep your comments coming in here. Uh, Trevor Cummins as well. Same with all be wearing T-shirts now after Asefa Bikila won in his T-shirt. And uh, Owen Callan didn't do too badly in a T-shirt either. So we've got a couple of more of the... The runners uh, coming in and all the Africans finding the place a bit too hot to handle. Maybe needs to do a bit more fitness work and come back next year here with Jim Ockey and Marion Square North and the team of the Dublin Marathon. Yeah, still nothing wrong with a 2.24 marathon. There is when you pump for cash and you're out of the cash uh, prizes. Suppose, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we'd take it, but we're near mortals. Our punters, perhaps. So Queen B Athletics Day, based down, and he's based down in Cork, and they've given a shout out. So Lizzie Lee is a popular lady, and uh, she's bang on. And here's Ken O'Leary now for Rahini Shamrock. So this is their third score. So I think this will be Rahini Shamrock winning the team title. Well, we have three Rahini uh, guys in with Dave Flynn as well. So hold your horses there, Phelan. Dave Flynn. You've Dave Flynn, you've Sergio, and you've Gary O'Hanlon. All oh, right, well then. I'm so, wrong. Excuse me, <laughs> I, sir. I think I'm wrong. <laughs> As Harry Gorman, 90 years of age, you can just see him beside the Norway flag. He's been starting the race, but a nice run. That's it. Killing O'Leary will be well happy with that. 2.24 is a good run for him, and I think close to a PB. We're back to the lead women again. That's that St. Finbar's AC vest, I think, just behind him. Cork, it's a Cork club down there. And uh, Debiso is still in the lead. Again, we'll try and get a few more. Yeah, probably 10 minutes before she makes the, the finish here. So, uh, yeah, Debiso is in the lead. I'll be looking at just making a quick exit briefly just to get one or two interviews maybe with our lead runners and Mick Lossie as well to boot. But uh, it's exciting times here as our next runner is coming through. We had Killian Leary previously, and we're getting our tag yeah, reading so here as well. One of the, from Germany in the, in the Garda HQ, yeah, Marcel Brautigan. Sehr good, Marcel. Past German, obviously, as well. Uh, I did. <laughs> My mother was a German teacher. If I didn't pass that one, I was out the gap. So, to be so now, this is what you're looking for. You're really trying to get forward momentum, nice rhythm on the feet, passing another back marker, giving you a bit of momentum, giving you a bit of rhythm, and I'd say this is another European police uh, runner, and we have a Dunboyne runner coming in too. Yeah, so, so that was Martin Williams from England Alan, and Alan, Alan Kenny then from Dunboyne AC. So they all run nicely, some good clatter runners under 2.30. Like, not too long ago, it used to be the winner of the national title anyway didn't even break 220 and Gary Crossan was kind of the man that really was the first Irish man under 220 for a long time and, and that kind of developed it and then of course Jim Ockney and his crew here to develop the marathon mission and that has had great dividends and we're really looking now that we've seen these 215s, 16s and Kevin Seward who's not running here today but part of that marathon mission was saying you know at the European Marathon in Berlin that you know it's time for the next wave at least that we, so we can get up to that 212 but it's very positive here that you have a runner, what did make run, 2.15 high? Yeah, it was 2.15 high, so about, a minute, was about a minute outside his PB. But then Dublin wouldn't be the fastest course around, so but Berlin is where he had it. But that's my point, that the 2.15 in Dublin for an Irish athlete is really respectable running, and, and that's where we need to go and then get even faster. And Ian O'Reardon said it earlier, it's not that slow of a course. People keep saying that, but it isn't really. So here comes Derry Spartans. Yeah, looks to be the first Northern Irish athlete home. And that's Kyle Doherty. 
And then we have one of our Swiss competitors. He's enjoying the crowd there as he comes into the home straight. Look at him, he's popping off the ground. Fist pumping That's well under 230. That was Manuel Sassi. The so Swiss police. We have the Schweiz. Five or six police athletes through all from different countries, and he is well happy with that run there. He's enjoying the adulation of the crowd, as everybody should. Such a feat to come through in this Dublin City Marathon. Everybody has done their 100 miles a week training for the for long period of time. Olympian coming in front of us. He's from walk, race walker turned runner. It's Colin Griffin, and he's probably on for another PB. He's going to be under 229. He ran under 230 in Derry. He's on the move as you see this black and white vest. That's the famous Denor Harry who had their 100th anniversary dinner or over 100 years. 218.20 for Colin Griffin, unbelievable. 228, yeah. 228. You can see a lot of these good club runners coming through. One of the Mooney brothers is a little yeah, further back. Right. See Newbridge, Newbridge coming through. The Frenchman, Vive la France, also coming through. More Harriers. Hashtag. Hashtag. These, yeah, these police men will have some night out tonight, I'd say. So they're all in around the 2.30 mark. This year, Thomas Fraser, Fraser there from St. Malachy's, based in the US, but runs for St. Malachy's. What a tradition St. Malachy's school have in Belfast. Okay, so there's one of the Mooney brothers coming through as well. All under 2.30. These guys are going to be pleased. Fraser might be too pleased, but he's under 2.30 nonetheless. As Debisu is back here, and we'll try and get back to our uh, leading leading women as they've gone by the American Embassy. So to be so is there we're gonna try and look back further down to see can we see Lizzie Lee. But it's certainly to be so's to lose now. Some strange things have happened but I think to be so is in the uh, uh, she seems to be in the well over here. hundred meters clear of film at this stage so Yeah no it, it's uh, barring disaster as it were as John Byrne has come from uh, he's off camera but he's in front of us here at the uh, cabin here as we're here with red box productions we're stepping it up we were sitting on the side of a van last year now we're really in the uh, now we're in now we're now we're in the porta cabin we're, we've, we've we've raised the game well i feel as though i'm in a sauna in a porta cabin but it's good all right well, we're all tucked up in plenty of clothes so it looks like france are going to win this world police marathon championship this is our third athlete through so Malik Etage. Oh, oh. Allez les Français. Ludo Gaia is on our commentary on the YouTube comment book. Czech Republic in. And uh, Michelle Reynolds, super run John Byrne. He's another stalwart, especially around Connacht there. The Mayo athlete. Well, we're, we're probably five minutes or less from seeing our leading lady, the Ethiopian Marisa Debiso. She's having a look back. She is struggling a little bit. She is. I did be say. A long, lonely mile. Nobody to run with. And there's our fourth French police athlete through. So they have packed extremely well. So it'll be more than Perrier they'll be on tonight. They sure will. And there's Mark Ryan in the green of Rath Farm. He's just gone off. The screen. There he is. He's back on that main screen. He's looking at his watch, but he's struggling now. So that last French policeman was called Jean Noël Villain. So he could be the villain tonight. Lorna from Sanctuary Tim came in at 2.21, fantastic time. And um, Patricia Cardiff the, is asking the question. The commentary goes through to the 4.30, so we should get the majority of the runners there. Yeah, I'll be back from 2.30 to 4.30 with the great David Carey from Team Carey. We expect him to probably come in around the three-hour mark and bring some of his leading Team Carey athletes through. Yeah, so we'll be on air for a good while. I might uh, duck out in a shortly that we can get a couple of the I can get a couple more interviews on the roadside for Athletics Ireland. But we'll wait because for this women's race because it is exciting and maybe something may still change. Yeah, just hard to see behind. Are there any female athletes in behind there? It doesn't look as though there are. She looks to have a significant lead here. So we're just going to try and go back on our tracker again. If you're looking for any of the results, go to the live tracker on, on your. You can get it on the phone app. The SSE, Tristy, and there's more French vests there. 
there's been an invasion. We also have a USA vest coming through now. I think it's the World Police. Is it I was calling the European Police? The World Police. Okay. We'll try and dodge the, the clink then. So Marisa De Piso, she, she has, she was averaging at 30k, 5.57, but she had slowed to 6.03. So it shows it's very winnable now for the ladies now, you know, because it's not that fast, six minute miling, you know. Um, we had a number of them around 2012 at the time, and Daisy Lee is on 2.32. But again, she's coming to the... Yeah, when you think Paula Radcliffe's around 2.15. Yeah. And we've had, what, 2.18s this year, 2.17s this year. But here comes Marisa De Beso. The end is in sight for her, and she's at 2.33 now. So she will break 2.35. So she probably has upped it in this second half because they were on exactly 2.35 pace at halfway. Yeah, I think Maria McCain just run around 2.33 in this course before, of course, Lizzie Lee's in there. Swanson, and she's not far behind, Lizzie. I can see her bounding in that famous step. She's in third place, I think, overall. She is having a great race, but... She, would have been something else if she could have won the overall, but she's going to win the national title. But Debiso here is going to come in front of us now in the Port Captain Finton. Yeah, so Marisa Debiso is going to be the 2018 SSE Air Tristy Dublin City Marathon Women's Champion. She's going to be around 2.33.50 or so, just over it. So the tape comes out for her to break that tape, and there she goes. So she is the 2018 champion, 2.33.50 for Marisa Debiso. And we'll have our next couple of runners in now shortly. So Mark McKenna down from Waterford AC comes through. And here's Gadefa. And Gadefa, yeah. So we're just going to look for Lizzie Lee. So Gadefa. 1 2 for Ethiopia. And it looks like it's going to be Ireland in third, hopefully. And then, of course, the national title for the Leave Yeah. In Lizzie Lee. Very even splits by Lizzie by the looks of it because as we said, halfway mark was 235 pace. She's very strong physically and mentally. She's here she is now on our screen. So we expect a big round of applause here for Lizzie Lee. You, she can see she's hurt and she's kind of bounding up and down, but she's smiling. You can see the second arch athlete in the world please. But there's the fist pump. Here's Lizzie Lee interview. She's got about hundred and hundred meters to go. She's really working here. Big run. She can see the clock, 10 seconds to 2.35. She's going to be just outside that. But it's a good bit better than her performance at the European Championships in so Berlin as well. Jim Ockney, the race director, yeah, gives the high five. High five, five there. She did well, well to get the arms up there for that high five. They'll be delighted with that. National champion, third overall. Nice pot of cash as well, lest you mistake. And then the gold medal and the glory to boot. Look at that effort, though. That's what it takes. Yeah, nice meal for those two kids now tonight or tomorrow yeah. night, I suspect, and we trip into some of the toy shops. Yeah, come on, Ryan O'Han. Great result for Lizzie Lee. Indeed it was, Gary White. Whoop, whoop, Lizzie, says Anya Murphy. Aidan Cooney, well done, Lizzie. So here is... She's come through the field. Natasha Cochran. It's going to be a massive PB. We, we have on our list that she's a PB at 2.49. And she's going to come through here in just over 2.36. So we're talking 30 seconds a mile faster than she's ever run before. It's just unbelievable. We just have to get that clarified. A fantastic run. And there's coach Donny Walsh at the back with Lizzie Lee. And they're having a chat there with Jim Ockney. Donny's probably saying, I, if I were you, I would have done this slightly differently, maybe. What do you think? Yeah, and that's uh, Brian... Uh, the former Olympic track league now taking pictures for Info Sports. Uh, his surname mistakes me, but uh, so Caroline Chip Cheecher comes through as fifth female home, the Kenyan athlete. And look at that picture. Look at Lizzie and Donny. He's delighted. She's wearing again that headband. Look at the tears of joy. That's what it means to win the national title, third overall. She is ecstatic, and there's going to be some good interviews with Lizzie. She's a good talker. And, Downey is. So here's our third Irish police athlete coming through. So the Gardaí have three men through at the minute, and he is tired, but he's still 2.37 pace. Dermot Gorman is struggling now as well for Ahini, but he's going to get under the 2.40. He's run around 2.30 before, I think. So that was Kieran Lees. And then one of our probably first sports world athletes. Yeah, there's Gareth Murren there in all black coming yeah. through in front of us. So you normally see him in the sports world white and red. Rahini Shamrock now coming through. So lots of Irish club runners. Great to see them wearing their club vests. Don't forget there's 